Welcome I to hope the everyone in America That's paid their taxes. Now. Good start. <laughs> what? Start. Well, I didn't understand anything. Solid Nobody understood start. any of that. That's, I, I wanted so everyone good. to be confused, but know that they missed out on important information. So I hope all of you are ready. Uh, good for the podcast. Let's go. Like always, you it's had, been were... a few weeks or months or something. I don't remember. And the, and Toaster's not here because uh, he's busy. So he just got mm -hmm. us fucks again. The OGs. Toaster's busy OGs. with the economy. And I'd rather ignore it. So here we are. Let's see. Oh, last last episode was called type, titled Helldivers 2 Good because I couldn't. I was too lazy to think of anything else at that point. So that means <laughs> Helldivers had just come out. So now uh dragon's dogma is out and uh okay is this is gonna be good? called and dragon's content dogma warning is, is good is bad <laughs> dragon dogma is what? bad what what dragon's dogma is no. also bad but content warning is also bad i don't think oh, content. Bad, right. i think right, right. i've been played content warning and it's just... it's just the shallowest sad little thing oh <laughs> Just think of the. I'm just thinking about the fact that like last night we played the new update for Lethal Company and we just had three hours of unmitigated joy. And uh -huh. then, and then we played uh, a week ago or something. We played Content Warning, which is like an attempted sort of Lethal Company ish game. And like, it was only it was very rarely funny. <laughs> at all <laughs> or even and, and that's rough because they lean so heavy on the comedy angle there's like nothing else going on with it really like for those that don't know content warning is a new game that it's not exactly like lethal company and weird people will probably act like it's not meant to be an obvious like response to lethal company's like popularity but like it's a game where four people in a squad go on a mission together in a ship and then they all like are on this alien horrible space and have to go in and finish and complete an objective and leave and make it back to the ship and so on like it's a it's just a very mm -hmm. specific like noticeably lethal company ish thing uh the, the minor difference is being like oh instead of a, a day night cycle clock there's like a an oxygen meter going down so you have to like that's your time limit to get back to the ship uh <clears throat> but this one seems to be like a response to the fact that like lethal company's known for it's like amazing like comic timing and having funny things happen constantly when people are playing it and so they tried to make a game about comedy instead like a game where you your goal is to go on the planet and film funny videos which is a little like i like that like i get it because like that was the creator's intent probably when they were like i want a game that gets money for lethal company reasons <laughs> uh what is it known for the making funny videos on we'll make a game about making funny video like it's just like that's that's how you yeah. develop an idea very very quickly when you're trying to get it out to market but and, I, and this sounds more cynical and mean than i mean for it to for some indie game i don't really care but like it's what really struck me is that when you get down to the planet there isn't like a goal it's mm. just to film yeah. the funny videos. So one person has a camera, and when they click record, it records. When they stop clicking record, it stops recording, and like stuff can happen. Like the person holding the camera can die, or the camera can get dropped, and it can still be recording and stuff like that, which leads to those kinds of like shaky cam Blair Witch moments or something. Yeah, and I like thought technically they they looked pretty cool in that department. The camera is well made. Uh, yeah. It's just that when you, it's just the realization that like, oh, you're either the camera guy, which is, which makes you feel like you're doing something or you're one of the stooges who has almost no like mechanical, like purpose or things to do besides just trying to like get in front of the camera and like do stuff. And you're trying to like figure and like, there's a, there's a, this weird feeling of like trying to like create stuff for the person to film, but also like. I supposedly you'd be like responding to the monsters and like the things happening in the game. You wouldn't just be like, that's yeah, doing stand up. <laughs> so like, you yeah, try you, like go that out. That is the thing. You try like go out into the world and find something, but like the person also can only film for like a minute total per day. Uh, it's a minute and they, thirty. And so it's a minute thirty. So you only get total. the hap the moments they happen to be recording, and the game doesn't really indicate that clearly when they're recording to the other players and. 
it's just like it's a strange experience where like almost the entirety of the run is irrelevant to the success of the run the end result and it's all based on this filming system and you can't really tell what the like success and fail conditions are or like what like you can't tell what makes viewers happy or doesn't make them happy in the game so it's a very soft scoring system so far where you're trying to guess what the goal even is or whether or not you even have to film stuff or just filming at all and turning it in it might even be good enough uh and it's just like i don't know it, it has this it has this like the if it, i'm reminded of like when jackbox was incidentally funny because it had fun it had uh like trivia games that like led that uh that lended themselves to comedy very well right like they mm. uh you you do the you answer the fake questions and you try to get people and the questions are designed to have where the the true answers themselves were already absurd so it's 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 inherently funny but then they're like well let's do quiplash you just you just write jokes you just write jokes and you're all trying to out joke each other and that's the game and like that was kind of less funny than the game where you just were incidentally funny because you were genuinely trying to solve a trivia question and in mm -hmm. that way, it's like Lethal Company is extremely funny all the time, even though the goal of the game is to be a survival, is to play the survival horror game and not to do jokes. And this game, the moment from moment go, every every time, you, the whole time you're playing it, your goal is be funny now. Just be funny. Just be funny on demand. Find something funny right now. And it's like, I, I, I find it really unappealing. I find it, it's like, it's, it's like being, it's like the idea yeah. of like being a comedian and someone being, okay, well, tell, make me laugh now like, like <laughs> yeah. that kind of thing like i'm like well like, i'm looking at the game i'm like well give me something and, and on that level like I, the the yeah. monsters are so sparsely spaced out and not there's not that much going on that like it feels so low energy and stark walking around this giant empty gray space and i don't know just hoping the camera guy happens to catch the moment something happens and so on and my my opinion is made somewhat worse by the fact that like the audio is horrible just absolutely like it was a it was a dream going back to lethal company and it's like very well filtered audio where everyone sounds like a little like every little radio voice and it, there's like a compression to it and also there's a lot of like spatial like fading and stuff that makes it like like shockingly good uh spatial audio for communications in any game i've ever played like it feels like it's better than any of the halos mm -hmm. i've played and then you play content warning and fucking Half the people are too quiet to understand, and half the people are like actively like peaking in their audio, and it's like ah, no, mm, and then you try to turn them oh, down, no. but then you but then you can't hear them a moment later, and you're like motherfucker, why is the audio so brutal? The goal is to be able to understand people. <laughs> it's like they didn't process audio at all or put anything in this game to deal with it. It's just raw audio. So like when I was playing it with uh, that's brutal. Wasn't it with wasn't it? It was Colonel and Bird were on my team the first time, right? No, I didn't play. Was it I didn't who was play it? it? Who was I have? It was oh, Brian. Uh, it was Brian and Brian. Bird. It was Brian. Both yeah. of them were peaking all the time, and I was actively like wanting to rip my headphones off. It was so hard to like, so uncomfortable to play. And then yeah, like you, even you guys were having more fun in your team. But I saw the footage of like the, uh, like the the fit, you we posted the clip that you made together, and even in your own clip, like you're almost inaudibly quiet <laughs> in your own video. Like it's just brutal. It's like there's they did not. Did not put the work in to make everyone understandable and sound right, and the settings aren't really there to fix it very easily. It's just I don't know. It's it's, it's a it it's, it's trying to, too hard to chase. Audio, honestly, yeah, it's such a crucial aspect for wel welcoming let's players having good audio yeah. in your in your game. And I, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand why they wouldn't prioritize that. But but if I mean yeah. if it is a response to Lethal Company, then it must have been developed very fast. Oh, like definitely a by, a, by a larger team because like the company's made by one person basically. But <clears throat> yeah, because I think it's like cluster truck I mean, people. Maybe, maybe I don't they know had how the many engine people already. Have, but yeah, maybe they had the engine already. But like as a game, as a like they're both I, they're both made in Unity. There's no yeah. excuse. Uh, when, yeah, when I say engine, I don't mean game. I mean things like you know basic. People underestimate level. audio. Yeah, like there's ob obviously all the like, voice stuff, but then like there's a point where like everything in Lethal Company has an audio cue. Which makes everything funnier, because there's because everything has a call out. You're like, 
like the like the way yeah. that you open a door and you hear that vroom and you hear that's like oh that's a turret fuck fuck fuck, fuck. like every every single <laughs> sound that not only communicates the survival horror or like gameplay mechanics in like an overwatch kind of way where you can like tell what you're doing but also just like you can hear what happened to other people and like clips are all inherently funnier because the language of the game always telegraphs what's happening via audio in addition to stuff that's happening like it's just it's so clean and I feel like content warning doesn't really get the point. And I don't know. I, I, it sounds, it's I not like you guys have more fun. Is... It just feels like it's it's maybe too much of like a, you have to make your own fun and bring it yourself. And like yes, almost like you're so... fixing the game. Like it's fun in multiplayer, the, the universal excuse. So the the way that I found or the, or the way that we had fun in content creator was that we we treated it more as if we were TikTokers showing up to an abandoned place and being dumb like so we're making we're making fun like we're going around trying to interview the enemies with a microphone we're trying to you know we're picking up video of someone trying something stupid like walking through lasers and then dying instantly like those are the things i i think that's the goal is that you're supposed to like i uploaded a video to the discord of a uh, there's like a great video by or a great tiktok um by by a guy named what is it uh uh, Josh VFX and he does a really good job of try basically encapsulating this entire game which is having a bunch of dumb idiots inside of a horror setting where they don't re like they don't treat it like a horror setting where they're just running around having fun goofing off and then something scary happens and the reaction to it is supposed to be like okay well I guess let's go and then it builds right then the escalation of like okay silly stuff escalation and then running from monster and like that is kind of the three-part act you need to be doing for every video and you just have um, to you just have to desperately hope that all the actors and the game mechanics all line up perfectly with how much film you have <laughs> otherwise you're just like oh ran well, out of footage footage fuck it that's the thing yeah so the, the the minute 30 so there's two things i would like to change which is one i would prefer instead of a percentage it showed just a bar like show a bar of how much is left or show a bar of it climbing down in the center of the screen because having a percentage in the top right corner is miserable because you literally just turn it on and then it's gone and you're like oh, okay yeah. well I just I guess I just recorded footage I don't know it's hard also, to keep that track that mouse wheel model is um, a horrible idea <laughs> I think it worked well for me but for some people yeah if it didn't it, you know if it doesn't it doesn't but do like, I mouse wheel like model we have mouse mod. wheel. We had a mouse wheel mod that lets you switch weapons with mouse wheel, but you zoom in and out with the mouse wheel with the camera. And then no, you're, if, if you don't press, but you don't have the right to... configuration of things selected, then if you press uh, mouse wheel yeah. at all, it switches weapons rapidly, which uh -oh. fucks up with your camera. So <laughs> like you, you're trying to hot swap between two oh, no. different mouse wheel functions because of the mod of, that we had for that for switching weapons with the mouse wheel. I'm like, this wasn't worth it. We could. I, we don't, we can't even switch. It isn't it? Is, it wasn't necessary. It was uh, it was actively sabotaging the ability to film the game. <laughs> so it's just a bunch of like uh, 0.2 yeah. second clips throughout everyone's videos because they kept accidentally mouse wheeling out of the camera. Yeah, you're supposed to. Uh, there's two ways you can zoom in. One is which if you're just holding it regularly, you hold the you hold R and then mouse wheel, and that's how you zoom. Um, or you're supposed to hold right trigger and then once it can't put the camera to your face then you can zoom in and out uh the problem yeah. is that the game is like not the game has very specific trigger moments for that stuff so if you mouse wheel in between the camera going to your face it moves to the next weapon or when you press r and mouse wheel you have to wait after you press r and then mouse wheel because if you do it too early it mouses wheel through your, your items the problem oh, is that God. like yeah, the problem is that it needs to be instantaneous. I don't know why it has a weird delay on it, but the game has a lot of weird delays on stuff. When you move around, your arms have a delay on moving to a normal position. When you're like turning, there's a, a slight delay on when your whole body finishes turning. There's a lot of weird minor delays into things. Um, even the enemies are like that. Enemies have like a long turnaround period or they have weird movement angles before they do jumps at you. Like there's just, it's a game where you have to kind of like plan around i don't know inefficiency i i i think hmm. the game is i think the game's fun i think there's a lot to to enjoy about it but i don't think it's lethal company good i think lethal company excels in what it's doing because it's not doing that <laughs> it's doing something completely different which is it's it is fun or the the fun you so uh it's very clear that content create creation took the uh the warning video 
or sorry, content warning took the video, uh, like the, the YouTube short angle of Lethal Company experiences. So when you watch Lethal Company on YouTube, you're getting the kind of content that content warning wants you to create. It wants you to create these interactions that are hilarious, uh, unexpected, and funny. The However, struggle there is the that game... that's not how YouTube shorts are made. <laughs> No, you like yeah, that's you, the thing is that, unless it's yeah. a scripted short, yes. which is also a wildly different thing. Like a script, you, most YouTube shorts are made are are clipped from hours and hours of content that you got to yes, film. Yes, exactly. So you don't get to and film so and the, edit in content warning. You have to live film the best ninety seconds on the fly, and that is so that doesn't work very that well. Is, it doesn't work very well, and I would I would almost argue that uh, a a better system is uh is like almost in a clip style format so if you have if everyone technically had head cameras or whatever and after something happens you need to press a button and it saves the last 10 seconds and then it gives the group a total amount of that so then you can say like okay we all saved 30 seconds of of what we think is a really funny clip right but someone has to call out still and say like i saved that clip uh so if there's someone that just like I don't know, something chases them. You can say, I'm I'm clipping that. And then that way it saves the last 30 seconds of the interaction, which then you know, right, you have the buildup of nothing happening and then boom, something happening. But yeah, you have to literally know an enemy's coming, which there's no audio cues for, and then start recording both up to and then the interaction because that's what Lethal Company does. Most clips on Lethal Company are someone doing like, nothing the normal game and then suddenly <laughs> something comes out of the fucking woodwork and the game can't capture that because you have to know it's coming which the game doesn't give you indication of and then you already need to be recording with such a limited amount of time that you have almost like a FOMO feeling of like is it worth recording this moment or am I going to miss something even better later and it just yeah it, it doesn't I think there's a lot of things that need to be changed about content warning not like at a core level but i think there's a lot of mechanical things that need to get tweaked in order to make it a much more smooth experience for what it wants to be but i like the idea i love the premise of like you're intentionally trying to go and and make dumb video content and make money off that in a horror setting that's a great idea that's like a i don't know it's like taking the blair witch but making it funnier in a concept like imagine just going into the spooky woods and be like yeah i know there's a witch in here but that's what I want. I want to be haunted by a witch. You're like, what? <laughs> Why would you want that? Yeah, I, I, I just feel like it's a little too naked in that we want the end result to be that people make funny videos in our game. So that does well. So. Yeah, well, I mean, the obvious. <laughs> We're going to make a game free. where they just tell people just make a funny clips. Just do it. Do our marketing campaign yeah. essentially for us. It, th I mean, that's why you make it free, right? That the genius of making it free is that then you have it a was, bunch of people going yeah, and making free a bunch for of content day. and then. No, it was free for like a week. No. No. Yes. It's free for April Fool's it, Day. It was literally not free the next day already. I had to like message everybody while I was still coming home from my trip. What? Be like, hey, everybody, get downloads right now. It won't be free anymore in eight hours. I swear yeah, it was. I didn't see that. I swear it yeah, was like half of us did, half of us that. paid for it. <laughs> oh. Because people don't listen to my messages on time. It's eight dollars. It's not Dying massive Zone's or anything, but they were me like, they're like they're like make it free for longer. Like, no, we need to pay for the servers now. <laughs> That's what the developer I said mean, in the thread. Obviously, the they thing, weren't paying like, for them because they broke down when we showed up. The game was struggling. And the thing is, I think, I think if they add a uh, sort of you know maybe not record feature, but like a replay, uh, replay feature to Lethal Company people like it allows for people to easily make stuff like they do in or like you guys did anyway in uh, from what i've seen in uh the content warning game because it's like any run that you go on lethal company unless, unless you're like playing very seriously uh and and just like you know exactly what you need to do you know exactly how to deal with anything but if you're you're uh if you're a beginner of the game and like i i've i've I, how many hours do i have it's probably like 20 or something uh, but i'm still a beginner i don't know much in lethal company let me open let me see 37 <laughs> hours my god yeah i am a beginner of a lethal company but my point is <laughs> any one I'm of like 112 runs, jesus holy crap uh, any one 90, of my runs 95. i look back 7. 
I look back and I can think I can make a, a one minute clip of funny things that happen. And it doesn't yeah. have to be the perfect thing that happened to us in this one session where Luther Wall is being flown up into the sky and all that. It's, uh, you know, even if it's just the way I die and the setup, like telling a story with video, like people who don't make videos don't necessarily appreciate the process of editing and how it is just making a story with with footage because if you have never never done that yourself you don't really know that what it is and i i uh i feel like I, without having played content warning i feel like content warning doesn't necessarily get people in the mindset of an editor they get people in the mindset of an improv artist um yes is that is different. correct it is a lot go, more improv based. And I think yeah. that becomes a problem for people who want like who people. Yeah. If you're playing Lethal Company and the goal is to like play a game with funny things to happen, that's not improv. Like the 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 improv angle of Lethal Company is like how you react to the, yeah. the enemy. But and even that then isn't, it isn't improv. It's just Yeah, it's not a conscious. Or it can yeah, be. you're correct. Well, sure. It but it's not be. a con it's usually a, a natural reaction. Like you normally yeah, yeah. react naturally, but there is moments where like if you know an enemy's around, you can be a little bit more loose with your uh, angle, right? You can you could say like, oh, I see a uh, what's it called? Like I see a, a coil head. And so someone's I, like, like Keith is just like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, just watching it come slowly ever closer to him. And it's like, hey, you could do silly stuff like that. And then something will usually come behind you and kill you and, <laughs> and surprise you or something. Yeah. Uh, but I always play with the yeah, coil heads. I, <laughs> Yeah, but so that's a but that's the thing is like if you're you know like if you were doing that right you're playing with a coil head and then something comes from behind and screams at you you would genuinely panic you would like have a fearful moment but also it would be really funny as a clip that would be an amazingly funny clip to yeah. have where you're sitting there and like yeah, confidently it's also so spontaneous that it would almost never get filmed. Well, that's and the, the other thing would not be it would not be filmed timing, on purpose. You'd have to be you'd have to have the timing, the timing down so perfectly thing, without yeah. yes. knowing it was going to happen. Correct. That's the thing. That's the thing with editing is is that timing is very often adjusted, whether it's yeah. because people sometimes talk over each other and some little bit of clarity is better on this one person what they say, or maybe because this line sets up the other line and you can sort of separate them and and like you don't have to go like full on Hollywood trailer level of of deceit in in, in making a story out of a trailer that's not in the final video, but editing even the slightest little like change to the pacing of the natural occurrence or the natural gameplay can make it funnier. And and that's, you know, that's fun. That's a fun thing to do. Edit. I love editing, honestly. It's uh, yeah. I don't do it very often. Also just, I kept wishing uh, the game would have more like funny interactions or things to do. And like bizarrely, the levels are full of like physics objects that don't interact with the enemies. You're like, Oh, I'm, I'm leaving. Yeah. Get, 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 get this. Okay. I'll get this. Something. And all you do is get to get, get a disappointing clip of nothing happening. Cause the game, didn't it let these two things interact i'm like well then why are they so both it's, here <laughs> it's slapstick but only for the players how did you not think the first thing i would do is associate like what if i get the monster on the weird spinny wheel or the punchy things like obviously i want those <laughs> things to interact with each other because it'd be funny and then and they just don't do it yeah. and you just wasted 20 seconds of footage it's very much still an indie game like it is edit like it, lethal company came out kind of rough but it quickly like once it started picking up steam i think because it started like because of two various factors. One, it doesn't require servers, which is a very important thing. Um, it is all locally hosted, which is... I don't, I don't know why Content Warning isn't. I don't know why there are actual servers re or like required in, in Content Warning to exist. Probably that is a film. weird choice. <laughs> No, but the film saved locally. It's, it's like record... I, I don't know. Whatever the point is, Something very, very bad it. design. We also Not had a that design, great design session engine. where for an entire three day cycle, every single film just didn't process. And so it just gave yeah. us the default quota amount to as a as a fail save. Like, and so the basic thing yeah, the wow, game does kind of, wasn't working. So there's just no payoff for the for the gameplay loop. It's a brutal thing. It's a brutal and, thing where if like if that one element if that one single element malfunctions, then it feels like you're not doing anything. That's the whole game. There is no other stuff yeah. happening. There is like there's no other mechanics at play. So that's just like if that one thing glitches out in any way, then the game functionally wasted your time for half an hour, and it's just brutal. 
Yeah, agreed. <clears throat> and that, that is, might just be a it's... launch problem, but it, that was <laughs> it was so deflating to because I was with in the Brian and Bird group, and we just weren't like mixing well with the game. And then I came to your group to fill in as Mandy left, I think, because uh, we that's we we collapsed the groups into whoever's left at that point. Yeah, and then the game just isn't working. And you're like, okay, cool. This is a good first set. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, it's. I, I tentatively it's marked really... part one as a let's try because I might not come back to it. <laughs> I don't know. I and that's fine. That's like I I probably would find it's difficult to get a group to go back to playing it. Um, yeah. Because it is genuinely a pretty a pretty tough sell. Um, I think a consider... lot of people will be very disappointed by it when the hype com comes up and dies down a bit because like there's a there's an infamous trend in YouTube bait video games that is such a stark negative uh, reputation that it's I have to actively argue past it whenever I'm recommending Lethal Company because I'm like, no, it's not like the, all the YouTube games. This game's actually funny and it's actually entertaining and it's actually got stuff going on. Uh, hmm. Is that yeah, like yeah, Content Warning is a game where maybe even most players that make a group together and go play it are going to not have that funny of a time or not that entertaining of a time because they've been tricked in, by, by watching like an eight minute donkey video that was edited over the course of hours of footage to show some funny stuff that happened and they think the game's going to like be entertaining in that way but really they have to bring all of their non-performer friends into this performance-based video game and just hope that they're the kind of person that steps up for that and like there are non-youtubers that are good are theater kids and whatnot and can and can uh bring something to that environment but like as far as just all the random gamers we that we know uh, and we bring on and we, we bring on in to fill seats sometimes and someone like even within our own circle let alone like random people that don't ever go on camera at all there's just a lot of people that aren't that inherently like performery and don't bring a, a, yeah, a ton yeah. of like improv energy or stuff to a thing and so it's like it's like yeah. i think just most people won't really know how to make this game funny because it isn't on its own really but also that's true, but I also think back to when I was, I, I want to say like eight years old, and I got my first cassette tape recorder, and I would spend hours and hours recording myself and listening back to m me just goofing off. And yeah. especially when done with, with friends, that, that was like, I had the best time doing that. It was hilarious. Yeah. We would laugh our asses off. And um, I mean, that's I think that's sort of that, that that faded with age but but like i, you had, you I don't had like know a, it faded you had like because... a, a technology toy you're like look at this crazy new yeah, thing yeah and yeah you'd have a little wild time but I also... for like a week no it wasn't for a week for, i mean it was for years for a couple of years at least that i it faded away that 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 pleasure from doing that i mean i eventually eventually ended up doing let's plays but still that's different <laughs> uh, you're also allowed to just go <laughs> you weren't constrained to like oh i have to do this yeah. really specific loop of like Load into the level, have 90 yeah. seconds of footage, load out of the level, and you get about 90 seconds of footage every what, 10 minutes. What I'm wondering is if it was a th because it was back in the 90s, or if it's because back in, I was in the 90s. Because, <laughs> you know, because it's different now. Like, uh, technology is a completely different place right now. And uh, do kids these days, they, do they still get a kick out of recording themselves? When they're yes. young. It's called yes. TikTok. So, so the <laughs> here that you're, you can yeah. you can so do, can, the, can kids record in TikTok? So there's it? a couple of yes. what? Remember, what? We, what are you yes. talking oh, yeah. about? No. Yeah. No, content, yeah. creation, yeah. content yeah. creation is actively encouraged yes. all the time at a young age now. People do it all the time. They go to school the and everyone's t everyone's all the teachers are like freaking out because all their kids want to grow up to be YouTubers. Yeah, the no, no, average the, below the age of thirteen. No yeah, you yes. just go. Yes. Oh no. I, right now. Do you know how I, many I, of the most here. popular YouTubers are children? Yeah. Are you kidding me? It's fucked know. up. Little like it little, is fucked little up. tyke it sounds... playing opening a train toy, fifty million views. I'm not exploited or anything. Like, like you want to yeah, see that's bad here? Up. I'm gonna let me show you bad, my man. Uh just as context. What do they do when the child literal... ages out? They just take what? them out back and shoot them? They are yeah, they are literal <laughs> makeup celebrities that are children. Yes, they do, by the way, Keith. Um, <laughs> they uh 
there, there are like there are literal like 12 10 year old children doing makeup tutorial videos like i cannot express That's to you okay. that children are dominating most content creation fields because here's the thing here's the secret about content creation when you're a kid you don't know what cringe is you don't understand awkward shitty bad content you don't have a thought about it you want to just make something and have fun doing it that's why you sat there for hours making things because i bet you i promise you if you go and watch or listen to the, that tape that you recorded you would suffer you would be under of immense course. nostalgic suffering because it's awkward and gross and because it's cringe and cringy it's yeah a, but, you know, yeah but kids don't have that. So when they go and play content warning, they're having a blast because they're making shitty cringe content. But for them, it is hilarious. And that's all that matters in the moment. All that matters is that yeah, they are yeah. having a fun, exciting, and silly, goofy moment in the moment. But that's what, the, that's where I wanted to get at, actually. That, you know, that, is, that is my point, though, is uh, maybe, maybe content warning is more aimed towards kids. And we're all here. We're old Holy farts. And, ah, it's, it's not technically good and the sound balance and ah compression my ears peaking and kids are just like ah this voice goes all funny when he screams i love that yeah and things like essentially that. also by the way apparently you can do it at like eight years old so uh it gets even worse kids, oh God. kids are I like they're coming out with that. I'm not oh wait wait i'm ears. sorry i i'm sorry i the, i lied the text you could also do it so awful and also the child exploitation <laughs> I'm sorry, you could also do it. But mostly the next place. I apologize. I didn't think about that. You could just keep it going younger. Could I find an infant doing makeup tutorials? I bet I can. Andrew's just like, posting a series <laughs> of makeup tutorials where the the same blonde girl keeps getting younger. <laughs> <laughs> look, they they're different blonde girls. Okay. I'm scared. Just because I don't, they all look the same. You can't prove that. <laughs> <laughs> I, that is true. I, I can't prove that, but I can I can tell you that the ages for these three children are are not okay. They should none of these children should be making YouTube none. videos. None. Um, yeah. uh, but the point being is that yeah, I think that's a huge hurdle. Is that games like Content Warning or specifically any kind of like what you're talking about those mediums that are like where's the joy and taking something weird you know like taking something and just recording with it and not caring is like that goes away as soon as you have any kind of inclination or understanding of quality content creation like as soon as you have the idea of what you're yeah, trying yeah. to make and how to and knowing that there it's possible to achieve it and how to achieve it with what you have suddenly it becomes less mm -hmm. about like oh let's just have fun with this and more of my god this audio is killing me and if i listen to more of this garbled <laughs> fucking blown out shit i'm going to kill someone like it's the same so my, phenomenon. my standards are too high for content warning is what you're saying exactly exactly yeah, it's the same phenomenon it's and that, and that it's, is it's, it's, totally it's what happens fine. when when you go and get recommended a B-double-O video on Minecraft and he goes around on his custom survival world making all these beautiful shapes. And you're like, I'm going to reinstall Minecraft. And then half an hour later, you're breaking blocks. And it's like, I'm not going to ever, ever, ever. And, and you close the game. It's the same phenomenon. <laughs> you get inspired. Ever, 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 ever. And you know, and you know that B-double-O is the best. And then you can't. I don't okay, know who that is. I look at it more, I look at it similar to reactionary content, right? When you see people make reaction content, the goal is that you're trying to make a video for people who are, you're making a video with the understanding of what it's like to share a video with someone and they don't react. And you're making the counter of that. You're trying to make a video where someone is hyped to watch something because then when they share, when someone else watches that, they go, yeah, that's my reaction. I want, I wanted someone else to hype or to be hyped when I showed them something. And it's that guy, that guy's doing it. Like that is the goal when you that make those kind of videos. Yeah, yeah. And, and so content warning is like that content warning wants you to be a dumb idiot child messing around with a camera and microphone and doing cool flips or whatever in a space that's scary because <laughs> and, and the enemies are like so nonsensical right the enemies are mostly irrelevant they don't have any rhyme or reason and they are either instant killing or not very intimidating at all and they just kind of exist like they randomly show up and there isn't any other goal besides i guess filming them technically and so you just kind of get to fuck like fuck around you just see like oh there's a thing oh my god it's chasing me and then you just move on you don't ever think about it again you don't do anything else and that's why i was like you i, I feel like the only way to to find joy in content warning is you have to 
go in with an improv bit. Like if you don't do that as an like especially as somebody who doesn't yeah, make content, which is creation, rough. Like, you you're just, gonna have a you miserable have to just know time. in advance to create a character and play a character unprompted. Yeah. Yes, and that is the like game the only way you'll most nothing, likely have fun. It serves you almost nothing. There's almost nothing happening in it. There's almost no mechanics. There's almost no like pressures it's, or incentives. It's just. Do the enemies even do damage? Because it felt. It oh yes, like, some of them. Oh yeah, one of them's do. just a fucking like drone with a gun or something. <laughs> yeah, one what? of them's just a, one of yeah one of them's just a dog with a gun on the top of it and it just walks around and shoots at you and it will just kill you instantly. Um, another one's like oh. a scythe wielding thing. It has like blades on its hands and it will just kill you in like two shots if you shine light on it. There's just a lot of a lot of like ridiculousness. Um. But I, but again, I think the importance here <laughs> is that, yeah, ridiculous. like you do, like it, it, it's very ridiculous. There's a, there's like a drug blender head. Like he just runs around and crashes that into walls. That is the walls funniest thing in the entire over. game like, is that there's a, there's an egg beater with legs and it just charges at you in a straight line whenever it thinks it heard something and it always inevitably runs into a wall and just falls over. It's very. That's great. that's um, funny. For, um, but that's great. funny for like five minutes. <laughs> It's true. That is true. It runs out very quickly. And I think um, I, I think a good example, like honestly, the best video to explain content warning is watching Donkey's video of content warning because Donkey's video is the boringest shit I've ever seen. It is so incredibly boring because it's him trying to do his normal shtick, but it doesn't work in content warning because the game has nothing in it. There, he, like Most of the fun they're having in content warning is by basically not playing the game correctly. Because they're not using the recorded footage that they made to make content, right? Like they are literally they're just, doing actual he's editing. Just, yeah, he's doing actual <laughs> editing. And so the problem Good with job. the problem with doing that is the game isn't fun when you're rec- when you're watching it from the not recorded angle. Because the goal of the game is to oh. record something. So you're doing a weird shitty meta thing where you're like, I need to record, but I'm not recording. And so anytime you see the joke being around recording, it's not funny. Because you're already recording. I'm watching a guy doing a recording, and that's not really that funny. The funny part is whatever you made in that 100, like a minute and 30 clip that you share with somebody. That's funny content. But the content outside of making the content is not funny. And so that's like, it's such a good example it's of a, like it's showing. Also, it's kind of the trick with a lot of these uh, tr- these viral games that come out, and everyone yeah. just hops on it and makes. They all take their turn making their one video about it and getting some million views, and because it's their job, is that yes. they do just fuck around and like you can you can you can almost hear like if, if you're used to this stuff and you're used in your conditioned to like think the way that they are too, you can almost hear them being like. <laughs> The fuck is this stupid ass game? Let's just get this over with. <laughs> like they're just like trying to get yeah. their video done. Uh, it's like one of the worst examples of that I've ever seen was like when Achievement Hunter tried to make a video for about Mist, and it was such a mismatch between how they make videos and what kind of I'm not Mist uh, with the Witness. It was such a mismatch oh. between the kind of content they make with the panel of people all joking about it at it over each other and the witness <laughs> and it was such an obvious yeah. content mismatch and they they can and they get actively mad at the game for not being the content they need it to be for their own video <laughs> format and it's like <laughs> y'all you're playing a, a almost silent and energyless hangout serene puzzle game and you're like i'm michael jones ah, i'm the rage quit guy i'm yelling at this guy playing puzzles games and it's like <laughs> but it's like that's that's the but like that that's the the video that kind of exposes the formula it's like so often these these things are people going in they're just trying to get their clip in and go out and oh play i i can't i won't i I can't say this about donkey specifically but conceptually playing with a donkey is awful because we've 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 (laughs) because playing with a donkey i love that (laughs) like i can't say donkey specifically i've never met him but people like donkey that are trying to just just farm out a highlight reel for their video uh they're actively awful to play with when you're sitting there filming the whole thing trying to make you know like a good playthrough style video of the game because those people will be like fucking silent 90 percent of the playthrough until they find the yes, exact moments yeah. that they think they have to cause a highlight to happen and they just do not contribute to the group at all like they are not it's like they're physically not present except for the moment that they think will make it into their video and it sucks and that, that kind of yeah. it further it's... exposes the charade of like how a lot of these types of youtubers interact with these kinds of games these viral ones because they're just there to hop on the trend make the video and then move on and put into the next game next week 
Yeah, and again, this isn't you know, like you like you said, this isn't a, a condemnation of Dunky. No, don't, I don't fucking know, know what the hell Dunky. That guy I'm just is. saying, but it, but it's but, like that's uh, why there's like a mill of there being like a viral yes. indie game every week. That's haha, so funny, and it's like it's it speak, and that's why it speaks so much to, uh, in favor of Lethal Company that we've been playing it for months. We've been playing it so fucking much, and it's just really entertaining, and we love this game. Yeah, it, and it, it does not it's the exception it, it of that. It doesn't hit that way. Um, I would never put a hundred hours into a LOL YouTuber game. Yeah, yeah, it's a fun game <laughs> by itself because it leverages the fact that we're together and building for a like an easily easy under, understandable goal, and we can all contribute a little bit or not. It's RNG, so it's like loot box in that regard. Yeah, just sort of. And and, and you, you know, can trust me, obviously. my my brain isn't baked by YouTuber numbers that have tricked me into liking a game because it's my livelihood or anything. Because nothing does well on my channel. Da 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 da. <laughs> you should try Darker Dungeon too. Because I've oh I've also God. played games with people where they clearly are bending over backwards to love a game because like it's cooked their brain with YouTube numbers. It's become like their core thing that makes that makes them feel good every day because it's making their YouTube channel do good and. It's like yeah. making them like, like, uh, spackle over all of the actual issues with the game itself because, but content and like, and I get that it's it is a, it does it is I mean it would be good to feel good all the time <laughs> because of a video game <laughs> for reasons that are outside of the game itself. That's how like that's like not that different from how fandom works. Kid, I wish I could be happy all the time. <laughs> video games, they ain't it. <laughs> I yeah I I get exactly what you mean and I I agree that there is definitely there uh, there is a type of person that content creation or that content warning is made for and our group specifically is really good at lethal company style content creation where we make mistakes we react to it and we have a blast doing ridiculous shit and content warning is definitely geared towards a different type of content creator and i think that's why i said like that's specifically why i say i think donkey is such a good example of this because when you watch him and his video it's not that the video is bad it is a standard flare donkey video but when you're watching it it doesn't make the game look fun it doesn't do anything to make the game look appealing and interesting to play because his style of content creation is more lethal company style his is more about those like moment to moment thing like not they're not about capturing moment to moments. They're about accidentally stumbling into moment to moments. It's about doing a thing, being practically kind of complacent with what you're doing, and then shit hits the fan. And and then that then you have the fun of like, oh my God, what is happening? Or you make dumb mistakes where you're like, hey, I'm gonna like what happens if I walk on this mine? And someone's like, no, 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 it will kill you. He's like, oh, but but you know, like those are things you can't do in content warning because it doesn't have things like that to do. Your only options are really to encounter an enemy and die by it, or to walk around and wait until you encounter an enemy and die by it. But there's nothing, there's no middle ground, right? Like Lethal Company has like literal holes you can jump off or uh, jump into it has it, like jumps you can't make it has mines it has turrets it has like multiple different things that create a sense of uh that can create more interesting content than just monsters and i think that's the problem that's the major problem that happens with content uh, content warning is that it is reliant a whole bunch on monsters that aren't consistent and don't actually <laughs> that aren't good that aren't very good monsters <laughs> um, they're not I, i'm not gonna apologize i'm not gonna it's, apologize that like ghost with a knife isn't very interesting meanwhile lethal company just added deflated stinky old man with a knife and that is like immensely more awesome. <laughs> they both like, added a guy with a knife and one that was yeah, extremely both, entertaining compared to the other one yeah one is so much and that is a, that is a pure That's what stood out to me is pure, that like uh, i think i think lethal company added like four or five like monsters slash traps in the newest update or something and every single one of them individually was more entertaining than the entirety of my time with lethal with content warning yes and that is that is yes i can i can assure you that just one map that we played was more entertaining than all of content warning um and there and it, it's but it's it's funny to see the design differences right you can see there is some good ideas in content warning. I do like I do like the aesthetic between the top and the bottom world. I do like the uh, I do like the central like everyone get on the couch and let's watch the video we made. That's really fun. Um, I I like that you 
I kind of enjoy the, the the store screen being like an automated touch screen thing. I would love that because every like it seemed like everyone could even use it at the same time and just like mess with one another doing it. Um, but I like the idea that uh, like it's a more visual and easier to understand what you're buying kind of screen rather than Lethal Company, which is like I got to type in a thing and I don't really kind of, you know, like you can you can guess what a, a TP zap gun is. But, but you might have to like take a moment to be like, is it a gun gun? Um, and I like the idea that you can visually see a thing that, you know, like you're buying before it's like a flashlight or a better flashlight. Um, but yeah, it's just all together, all together on its whole. I think it doesn't succeed in doing what Lethal Company did. And maybe that's not its goal. Maybe its goal was to try and hit a different niche market. But it feels like Keith said, it feels very much like it does. It, feels it is cynical. inspired by Lethal Company. It just feels cynical it does. That what its gameplay loop was chosen to be. And it's like, ah, I want to well, be like the content, game that causes the funny clips. Content creation can be a little cynical. It's, it's a yeah, but I'm saying the concept came first. The title and so on came after. True. Like that's, yes. that's based on exactly. the concept. The concept was like, I want to be, how do you, this game's famous for making funny clips on the internet. How do we make a game that's famous for funny clips on the internet? Let's make a game about making funny clips on the internet. And then the gamers will just find a way. <laughs> and it's like, gamers I don't know do. if it works, gamers know if it quite works that way, buddy. <laughs> we'll see if it's around but in a month. We'll see how it's doing. Uh, I'm. I haven't the, heard anybody talk about it on Twitter. I have not heard like a single like. It's I, not it, around like, in a week. Or it two. did feel like people it's, stopped talking about it the moment it wasn't free anymore. Like that was an effective yeah, way to much. be noticed because so many games literally don't seemingly come out because of how little attention they get. They just like, oh, did that game happen? <laughs> I. But, it's uh, impressive too because technically it is in the exact perfect format for uploading to Twitter. Right. It is in a perfectly one minute, 30 second long format that you could easily just slap on a Twitter and upload around. And I don't see shit about it. And that's impressive. Um, yeah, I I'm like scrolling through my feed right now and I'm not even I see like your video that you or I see the one that you posted <laughs> about Lethal Company last night. Uh, but I don't see like any any other video game content I see is not none of it is content warning. Yeah. And that's that's not great. I think that's not great for a game that literally was free for a day, had a huge push on the internet during that day, and just no. I didn't. I like. I don't even see people making videos from that day that it was free. Did everyone I just play it and realize it was bad? Like, like I, I ironically <laughs> did not make a short out of lethal out of out of content warning. Like I didn't. <laughs> I didn't a, edit. I didn't edit, and it, I didn't make any funny videos out of it at all. I just moved on. I'm like, well, we tried it. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah, I literally posted uh, I posted a Lethal Company short minutes before we started the podcast today. I was like, "Andrew's on a dog walk. I'm going. I'm, ma- I'm making. I'm making. I'm making the egg. The yeah. eggs. Uh, the egg cut." <laughs> and that was great. There's two. There's literally like two cuts. There's two egg cuts, uh, which is great. You have like two. <laughs> you have two videos that you can combine into one for the same mechanic, and I think that speaks so many volumes because the, again, content warning has things like that and it has like party poppers and it has you know fun little items or whatever and i don't think you can get nearly as much content out of it as just a one single random joke item gets you out of lethal company which tells you so much like it tells you so goddamn much about the (laughs) and it's because all the jokey (laughs) items in lethal company are themselves mechanics you have to play around and they're risk reward mechanics and threats on top of being funny like they just added the egg to the game, and the egg when you pick it up, it's just a funny little Easter egg, and you throw it and it bounces. It makes and a makes noise. A, it makes a squeaky noise. Just like what is that? And then people get curious about it, and then fucking. So I, I was like, oh, I held the egg, and like, oh, you want the egg, Colonel? And I just had it. I just threw it on the ground, and he and he was like, it squeaks and bounced, and he went to pick it up. Then he threw it, and it fucking very loudly <laughs> popped and exploded, and it burst me five feet in a direction, and confetti went everywhere, and I took damage, and I fucking screamed. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> it's like a scram- gunshot went off. off. I was so upset. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm doing, and then later on, I'm doing this big terror run through the fucking Neon Gen- Genesis Evangelion landscape, and I'm, I think, and I'm the only person alive, and I'm holding on the only gear, and rockets are being fired at me, and I need to, need to get on the ship, and I just barely make it on, and then I, I fucking, 
I think I'm dead, but I make it onto the ship and I, I, I just sigh and I have that like that feeling where you get off from work and all your clothes just explode off of you and, and with the moment you're indoors and it's me just d just dumping all the items I'm holding on the ground and the second item I drop is the egg and it explodes on my feet and kills me and we fail the entire run and then the ship takes off and I scream again. <laughs> Did you fail the entire run? I thought Halo survived. Yes, survive. I was the only survivor, and I exploded. Oh no! <laughs> All I had to do was not drop the egg. So now we just have an item we're afraid of putting down for the rest of the game. <laughs> you can put it in the uh, in the in the yeah. You put it cupboard. in the storage cabinet. Like it's a reason to use the storage cabinet essentially. But like it's just a game you're afraid of ever put. It's a weapon. It's an item that every now whenever you find the egg for the rest of the of our playthroughs, you're always gonna be afraid of setting it down ever. Like it's just permanently in your inventory essentially uh until you get all the way back to the cabinet because if at any point you put it down it might explode which not only causes damage uh and noise uh and it could be useful if you can if you can like flashbang an enemy or something it might work but it's worth like 30 dollars, so you want to take it home and it's sell nice. it yeah but yeah, but, uh, nice. but every step of the process of you sell of you taking it home and also s selling it later no one has to ever put it down on the ground because it'll explode. It can. It's and that's just one of like truly... fifty items of this game being a prick to you. There's mm -hmm. a lot of unhinged shit in Lethal Company. And yeah, like when you pick up a toy robot and it, it starts better. screaming at you, and then the dog comes and eats you. You're like, no, please. That that does but, it, or the teeth. It's a good so, video game. Go check out. Content warning, I guess, if you if we just Why? compelled you to to have a good time. <laughs> we just with spent it. Uh, like an hour talking about right. how it sucks. But, but the uh, but yeah, so it's it it came and went. It just isn't it isn't anything, and I feel I feel bad because that must not I don't know that must be kind of unpleasant to spend time make something. It's still something that's made, right? It's still something that time was spent on, even if it was even if it's point or it's a conception was through shallow ideals uh it's still a thing that was made and to see it kind of just fizzle out immediately um i don't know seems kind of that kind of sucks hopefully it gets better over time i hope there's some kind of big rehaul update that comes out and makes it a really interesting uh cool game and then we can go back and have a good time with it uh until yeah. then i feel like they really need to just try again yeah, at your own risk, uh, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, seriously, if you're going to, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a game that either you got it for free or now you have to pay for it. And if you pay for it. Yeah. No, I mean, know, the you're, developers you're need that. to try again. <laughs> like the, this. No, the no, formula, I, the current, I, yeah. the I was current, I was responding to Colonel, yeah. but, but yes, they, they do need to fix the, they, the developers need to think about how they want their game to be because uh, uh, how it is yeah. is not it. <laughs> I think overall it just doesn't really work. No, I don't think so. Um, I think, yeah, I think it needs. I think it needs a lot more work. Like, why that kind of sucks. Like, why but... does the level exist? What do you do in the level? Um, yeah, yeah, you're just filming it. You're just filming the level, and the, but the level <laughs> itself like, isn't actually worth filming because it doesn't get a lot of views. All, so you need to all, find things. Yeah, in the, the level. level is just monochrome and has almost no features that do anything. It's it's occasionally a laser delivery system, but overall, it's just like. It's just not interesting. Like, why would you go deeper in the level? Just to risk getting lost and not getting back? But, like, you could just not go that deep. And the monsters will probably still happen. It's just, I don't... It, rec it feels like it recreated too many things from Lethal Company without recognizing that it changed why those things existed. Because, like, you go deeper in Lethal Company to find more scrap. And then you risk getting lost because you're trying to find more scrap. But there's no... There's nothing waiting for you deeper inside the level in, in Content Warning besides the opportunity to not know how to get back and lose the run for no reason. It's just a weird, it's a weird setup. Hmm. It's, yeah. So, oh well. Maybe next time. But also, also Dragon's Dogma that. is bad. I yeah. Yes. I was going <laughs> to say, I was going to say Dragon's Dogma. You I'm mentioned excited. it. Time. Everybody go. was so excited for Dragon's Dogma. I just this get is to just the, the real the real just clickbait. The, just the of Keith this, rants about games podcast. video that everyone else just listened to Keith. No, because I want to rent. Games. I want to rent as well. I want to rent as well. Yeah. Have you, play, have you played Dragon's Dogma? Turn. No, I haven't. But I, I, I have. What are you uh, ranting about then? <laughs> about the monetization. Oh, I guess I wanna, that's oh, the least yeah. interesting reason. 
Okay, okay, then you, it's it's not interesting. Let's rant about your your. It's just, uh, the, your, it's just not that interesting to pick. go up the, the microtransactions, especially since like half the people complaining about microtransactions in that game don't seem to know how the game works. So they're like yeah, well, they're trying you, really you have hard. Did you to use a microtransaction? No. <laughs> I never okay. bought a microtransaction. <laughs> And I never uh, felt the need to. Do you to? ever have to? Do you ever have to? Is that a game where you have to use a microtransaction? Technically, no. all those not even gotcha weird, games. Technically, those like not weird energy gotcha ones. Games. Like there are games that eventually you, you functionally can't do anything without paying money. Uh, but those they realized those were largely bad ideas. But no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not defending microtransactions. I'm just. I'm ambivalent no, no, if to it's microtransactions. Boring, it's boring, yeah. They, well, yeah, it's not yeah. even that. If the game was amazing, I still wouldn't need to spend microtransactions on it. Like they're not. It's not like you're there. It's not like they sold outfits. But that's the thing, though. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like if we if we are gonna discuss the microtransactions, I want to talk about specifically that attitude. The because because well, you have to. What well, people have to start thinking of my, about microtransactions not as the the players buying them, but as the the companies that make the games selling them. Because those are two different things. When 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 a company sells microtransactions, you don't have to think, do I need to buy them? You do on a personal level, but that's not the problem of a microtransaction. The problem is that they're selling it. So yeah, the, I know. The, I was on team. I'm team anti horse armor. Anti horse armor. <laughs> I was here from day one. I'm just saying we lost. We lost. But the thing, it's the impossible thing that, to play a really... single multiplayer game that isn't just a thing you buy and then you just play it forever. And the one of the primary talking points about Gigantic, a game that you can now just buy and play forever and has no microtransactions, is people complaining that you have to spend a whole twenty dollars or whatever for a, a entire game that will never charge you for anything ever again and gives you every costume and character for free. I because hate it. Are I hate everything. It's the same. It's the same brokenness that gets them to 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 immediately kick back and say it like in a game like uh uh what what was the that one Mortal Kombat something gigantic or other. costs like, less than an Overwatch skin. Yeah, that's that's true. The whole game <laughs> that's, forever. There's a there's and a Mortal, Mortal Kombat game. People complain. I want to throw game. gamers into the sun. So yes, I agree. But also, I'm over it on some level. Because yes, every Keith, single Capcom you... game has microtransactions, and I forget they do. In part because the games don't even tell you they do. Like it's like it's a it's like the it's like the publisher mandated that there be microtransactions because, yeah, that, on the Steam page. That's true. And that's it. Yeah. Which is funny because you buy the game and then you never go back to the Steam page because you bought the game already and the game never yeah, tells you it has microtransactions <laughs> in the video game. So mm -hmm. I, I had a very funny first uh, day stream where uh, I was I was I was uh, on a mission to cover De uh, Dragon's Dogma two at launch, and so I'm like, okay, I need to record a four hour video right now and then and then start rendering and uploading it so I can have it up for tomorrow as fast as possible to make to fit into my schedule so i had my four hour long stream just doing one huge video and i had a pretty good time like i hopped in made my cat man uh went out into the wilderness broke the first quest immediately uh had to hmm. I, I found out the hard way that apparently i only found out later like apparently like you get, you get someone on a mission to go to the capital and this guy's escorting you and after you like run into like a mini boss set piece and then you could basically after that teleport to the capital and the story just takes you there Instead, I lost that guy immediately. I think he drowned. And then I walked all the way to the capital the long way, oh. having a full immersion fucking Metal Gear Solid subsistence run through the entire landscape and immer immersing myself in all these different mechanics and having a pretty good time. Uh, and then when I arrived, I was like, oh, I don't have the papers to get into the capital. And the NPC is not here to get me into the capital. Wait, did I break? Did I soft lock the game? Am I fucked? And so I go, I go around the side and I find a place that I'm not supposed to be in and I get arrested. And getting arrested functionally got me to the guard captain, which is who I was going to meet anyway. And then it triggered the next quest anyway and just continued on when I got arrested. Like me getting arrested was a way of fixing the that's fact great. that it was really funny and clever. And that's the yeah. kind of, the peak. unfortunately, the first four hours were the peak of the game for me. And it never matched oh, no. it again because most of the quests are very bad. Uh, the NPCs are non existent. The story is bad. Uh, and the mechanics don't get any more in depth or interesting than they do in the first four hours. So I had already experienced what the game was had to offer, and then then had to play for uh, thirty more or something. But uh, oh no, I I started that stream when game when the reputation for Dragon's Dogma was game of the year, coolest thing ever. We're so hyped about this, and when I ended the stream, it was overwhelmingly negative on Steam. 
in that four hours. So I came back. So I turned off my stream. I'm like, well, that was a pretty fun time to edit this video. And then I, look, I, then I see all the news about Dragon's Dogma is like, the developer tricked us with my surprise microtransactions and uh the game is burning everyone's computers alive and i'm like the game ran fine i didn't run i didn't encounter a single performance problem i don't think when i played it uh so i just like i just had a, a pleasant little stream of a mid game and the fucking world was burning surrounding that game the moment i turned off the recording <laughs> and i'm like what the fuck is happening what is everyone yelling about <laughs> uh, and part of that is the fact that, like yeah the game Unlike almost every single video game I launch nowadays has seven consecutive title cards you have to click past that try to promote the different things you can spend money on or events that are happening and seasons and all this other shit. Dragon's Dogma was just like, hey, it's Dragon's Dogma. Hit start. It's not even two. They, they, they just named it Dragon's Dogma, which is yeah, super weird. Like, yeah, it just says Dragon's Dogma. I know what it's about now, but, uh, oh, okay, but yeah, it just go. says Dragon's Dogma, and then you start and you play it and you just do it, and the game never tries to sell you a single thing. So... The reason why I say I'm when I said the, the extent to which I say I'm over it with these things is that I've played a lot of uh, Resident Evil 4 remake and Resident Evil 2 and 3 remake and Monster Hunter World and Monster Hunter Rise and Dragon's Dogma now and they're all Capcom games with microtransactions but I only I only like like intellectually know that I don't feel that I don't in viscerally. Mm. I don't believe any of these games have microtransactions <laughs> because I've never seen them in any way that doesn't just bounce off my brain immediately. And that's because the games don't ever say they exist. And I'm like, who the fuck goes back to the store page of a game you already bought? <laughs> so I'm just like, I don't, I don't know. I can't. I don't even know if they sell. But they're also microtransactions that like cost nothing to make because they're all just they're almost always just like here's a they're consumable cheats. you can buy again in the store yeah, they're cheats they're paid yeah they're cheats. basically cheats <laughs> yeah <laughs> which is like so the, I, the I can't imagine kind, they're selling also, that well but they also cost nothing to make so i guess they'll just keep putting them in but yeah i just i no, don't like i i i think they they're probably a uh I will say that people who say that the game is trying to like trick you into buying microtransactions by making things artificially scarce is just talking out their ass because that's just not the well, reality there of are these games. That do that. Yeah, no, but that's uh, not. But they're not. They're not talking about the topic. They're just talking in, in abstract and not about the topic. But they're, cla but they're claiming it's about the yeah. game itself because they say that all the time about everything because they're just on repeat. But like, well, yeah, but it's, if you're, it's if people you're that haven't played the, it's people that haven't played the game saying the game works that way, and I'm like, okay, you could try playing the game and do the journalism yeah, thing but, where you review the thing based on having seen what it's like, and it's like, then you'll know it's not like that. Especially if you played the first game, which didn't have microtransactions and had the exact same travel systems and the same scarcities. But if you sell an, a a way to bypass that. It, do, it it exists. It immediately exists in the game. Like you can't. Yeah. The you, you're saying like the, you're saying the second game does not have the same travel system as the first game. By the way, you you making it sound because it does. You have can the same buy system. no because you can buy ways to make it faster. So the game. So so there. The, the, if you buy the full game with all the, the expenses, you get the game has other things. It has more things. You know what I mean? It's like I don't know. Um, Mass Effect 4 you have a now couple comes more up. of the thing that you use to do the thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, you yeah. Don't, you don't buy not, like uh, the Infinity Hearthstone or anything, or like, like, or yeah, like yeah, a, a mount. Like a huge, <laughs> it's not a night and day difference. What would but be it is, really it is fucked different. up is if the game had a mount you could buy with real money, because the game does not have a mount, and the nothing I want more than, than a fucking horse with how much fucking well, running around I, you have to I do think... in this game. <laughs> but it would, it would be, it still be the same thing if the game allowed you to buy a DLC mount. The game would have a mount in it. You just don't necessarily have it if you buy the cheap version. Yeah, of that's game. what I just said. Yeah, but I'm, what I'm trying to say is, <laughs> I'm saying that's an example of what would be fucked up if this game had no mount in the entire game. Then you buy a mount, I'd be like, what the fuck? I think I think it's the same thing. It's it's still like it's partially probably like not. cutting. It's cutting. It's still cutting the game in half. For for actually, I think the mount would be less less. Uh, because it's like an expansion, right? If you sell, like, if you sell Crusader Kings and you have an expansion where the barbarians come in, or you can play as barbarians or whatever, like that's extra functionality, that's extra features, changes the game, changes priorities and stuff like that. And you pay more for that. Uh, 
instead of I don't of, understand like, a universe where that doesn't where that's not an example of cutting something to sell it. But the example where is. you just well, add the ability to buy a couple more towns, uh, like Diablo Two Scroll of Town Portals, is yeah, cutting stuff from the game, even though it's stuff you have it in is the game. Because, it is because literally opening nodes to teleport is not like that's not a thing. Gameplay features like a mount and art assets and stuff. That's the thing. That's a thing. Like that's that takes time to develop. If you want to cut and parcel that and sell that as a profit to your most dedicated players, you know, that that's kind of, you know, it's kind of shitty. It can be kind of shitty. Maybe it is. It's so Maybe. much worse. <laughs> it's a huge change to is, how though. the game would play. But but it makes but it's also a thing if you can you can opt in and you, you can opt out you you maybe don't want the mount system, maybe you want to play a run without without that or whatever you know. But literally sure. just you opening can always up, not press a button, even when it's in the game. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's true. That's people true. Have, done, people have done challenge runs saying, forever. Halfway through the run, yeah, exactly, I was thinking exactly. like, can you do a passivist run? Can you just not fight? And win win. But what I'm how, saying, how optional almost everything in this game is. Could you just not fight a thing and win? What I'm saying is is uh like if the new DLC for Elden Ring adds a flying mount, you know, that's not bad. That's that's cool. That's a cool feature that they added. And it takes effort. But if they just, you know, I don't know, if they add uh, I mean it's it's mixed if they just Imagine they make a, a an Elden Ring DLC where they, it's just a skin for your mount, for your already existing mount. That's not as cool, right? Because it's just a skin. It doesn't matter. But if it flies and all that, if it has new features, if you know, it has new gameplay, then it, you know, it's cool, I think. I thought your like, argument that, was isn't... that adding gameplay to the microtransaction is bad. Because like anything that it adds no, more no, no, that no, you're no. carving off from the players is bad. My argument is that the when the microtransactions are literally already like it's not like you're literally paying for something that is already in the game, whether it's uh, experience points. That's always points, true because that's how DLC works. It's always downloaded no. on your computer anyway. No, no, it isn't. It, it it's it, it's extra content. Well, it depends on the game, I suppose. But what I'm saying is like if it's just opening up teleporter nodes or whatever the name of of uh, the fast travel is called then that's not that's just a cheat that's like it's not a cheat it's it's what the game developers want but it's uh that that's not content that's just change like that's making the game more uh, you know more accessible or or easier to play because you don't have to walk there you can just fast travel to those specific spots it's like buying mountain blade and and then you you pay for a dlc where you can start the game with three towns instead of one or whatever i don't remember what how many towns you start with in mountain blade but you know what i mean this is like no let me let me start with three why 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 you have the limitation it doesn't cost you any more letting me start with three towns you're just you know just uh, what's the word you're ripping me off basically as a as a player who wants to play your game and that i mean because the thing is uh, there's so a, you a also do just thing. earn the things anyway while playing the game. So it's more, it's like having a, it's like having a microtransaction where you start Zelda with two more hearts for some reason. Yeah, but in <laughs> Mountain Blade, you can also just capture the three towns, make a save, yeah. and there you go. You have a save that starts with three towns. It's the same thing, but yeah. but it's predatory because you're you're uh, you're, it's not an actual value that you're creating. You didn't add any new features. You just change the number. And it's, okay, here's this game. It's like selling an easy mode on 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 a game or something. And they would never market it as an easy mode, but they would they would give you a sword that's overpowered or something. I I have in, trouble in, accepting the idea that a microtransaction is predatory when it doesn't even bother advertising itself as existing, let alone pressuring you to buy it ever. The I I will be honest the the reaction the like the vitriolic I say vitriolic maybe that's not the word but the, like how bad the reaction was to Dragon Dogma micro, microtransactions kind of surprised me because it, it is true it is as you say it is kind of it is it's, well, it's personality it's so, driven it is, like I, I saw the tweet it, thread by KC Explosion complaining about it and I'm like man just reading this thread I can just tell that that like she didn't play the game. Because just basic mm. words don't make sense in these sentences, and it's like that's not a massive indictment. I'm just like it's this is this it's just a reminder of how much of Twitter is people just yelling about things that they've heard about. 
and how unproductive that is because no one has knows what the thing is. Speaking as somebody who makes video essays and people yell about me on Twitter without watching it and then all yell at each other about the, like if she is gay, like isn't he bi- isn't he literally in love with the rabbit and uh, this is by erasure and all these other things and I'm like every and I read through the thread I'm like every single person in this, this thread is like no, has it. noticeably not pl- watched my video and half of them are ad- just saying up front that they haven't watched the video because they have this like approach to content where you don't ever it's like it's like pro shipper brain like your anti shipper brain where it's like you never engage with uh, with bad media you have to preemptively figure out what's bad media without engaging with it and then warn everyone else about against and engaging with it and then still have strong opinions about it even though you don't know what it is still and that's like how people talk about my video cuz it has a million views and it broke through to being watched by annoying being being known by annoying people uh mm-hmm. and that same that same cycle i saw a lot around uh, around Dragon's Dogma where I'm just like okay well I just wish the people in this conversation had played the game because then we at least had a baseline understanding of reality and what the game is and then we can talk about whether or not the horse armor is bad and stuff but like they don't know how the as game somebody, works they don't know how like, mo- somebody, like the transportation system works or how much walking around there is or how common or not common fairy stones and port crystals are or how much the game is and isn't des- in or is or isn't designed around the idea of being crunchy and ha- taking time to get around in the first place and so on and it's just like and whether or not that's good because i want to debate with people about whether or not the level of travel time the game has built into it inherently is actually neat or not because i'm kind of against it to an extent but but all the conversations between people that have only well, heard about the game and it's just so frustrating yeah I, I i myself have not played the game my only argument is against it's more against the defenses that i've heard for uh, you know for including market transactions than necessarily against the game I, I am all for a game that is designed around inconvenience and things I, I like one of my favorite thi- yeah. uh, things. And my stance is that in... this thing is bad, but it's also like the noise floor level of bad that is just every single game you can buy now. And it, and I can't, it's like almost inescapable. And I'm just like, I'm just tired. Mm. <laughs> I just can't bring myself to be like, and this is the thing I'm mad about when there's much more interesting conversation to be had about like how the game is yeah, just wanted, kind of a weird that's, shit show. <laughs> that's why I wanted to, uh, to, uh, to sort of lead me away from from the argument against <laughs> against microtransactions, tell us what is interesting about it being bad. The game's like Share. shockingly shallow. Like just, which is weird because like every time I hear praise about it, they talk about how in depth the game is, and as far as I can tell, they just mean like, oh, it's over the course of playing through the game, you unlock like eight classes you can switch between, and you can like level up each class, and each class has like they they claim that they have depth. But I'm confused by that because each class, uh, they level up linearly over the course of like 10 levels per class or something. Uh, you can make zero like like build choices, really. Like you don't so like... So they're just skills. Like they level up linearly like in Diablo 3. Like you just yeah, un- you yeah. just unlock the class and then you finish unlocking the class by leveling it up. Uh, yeah. There is a skill tree. Not a skill tree. There's a list of skills you buy. Uh, but you can only equip four of them to your face buttons, and those are the, the all of the abilities you get. At it. So it'll, it'll give you like like twenty abilities to pick from, maybe, and you can pick four of them on each uh, class. Yeah, that's cool. But well, yeah, it's all, each class, but you only have one class at a time on your character. Uh, yeah, 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 still. But it makes really strange you know, choices. Bet- like I unlocked Mystic Archer about half an hour before beating the game. So I'm like, oh, cool, thanks, buddy. <laughs> My fucking pawn was an archer this whole game. I could have used him having being a magic archer when he maxed out archer 20 hours ago, but I never unlocked mystic archer until right before the game was ending, and I don't even know how I unlocked it at that point. Uh, but the uh, my problem with the game is that uh, I'm, I'm really mixed on it, because like people keep praising it for being ambitious. And on some levels, it has ambitious ideas. On other levels, it is incredibly bad at following through on basically anything, and a lot of the stuff that seems ambitious about it is just carry follow through from the first game that was already there the last time, a decade ago. And at the same time, it's like a shockingly shallow game as far as like things you can physically actually do in it. Like, if you think about an open world RPG, 
and you think about what the assumed mechanics are going to be, you're going to assume that, for example, the game has a crouching button that lets you stealth. And it's going to have, like, pickpocketing and lockpicking so you can open, so you can have, find alternate solutions or ways to navigate environments you're not allowed in and, into and so on. Like, you, on some level, you just Makes sense. assume that there's certain well, interactions, maybe potion crafting or item coming from crafting or other shit. Like, that. I'm just saying, like, there's a... There's been a a industry wide trend towards Indus yeah, exactly. a widening series of mechanics that are almost ever present across a ton of different open world uh, RPGs that are the type of games where you have towns and like mm -hmm. and NPCs that walk around and like and here's the generic NPCs that just chatter at you and here's the main NPCs that talk to you, that to give you quests uh, like but like in this game the the entirety of what you can do, for the most part, is you can fight, and you can run, and you can pick up enemies and allies sometimes. You, you can physically hoist them over your shoulder, which is very funny. Mm -hmm. Oh, The game oh, letting wee. you do that almost all the time is extremely funny. Like, uh, there was an NPC that started quoting uh, the Great Replacement at me, and so I threw him into the ocean. That's fair. And that, and that, that freedom is very amusing. But... If you think about what I said just now, about how it's a game where you fight things, and you pick people up, that's not a lot of verbs. It's not a lot of verbs at all, yeah, is it? it's a fighting game. So how do you make so quests fighting. in this game that has almost no actions in it? Like, I'm just thinking about, like, there's like a... When you play a game like 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 the, later, the latest Zelda games, for example, uh, or just dozens of other games, there's like a playfulness to the quest design, because there's so many mechanics to play around with, that they can either give you a really open a really open goal and give you and and design the game to have like 10 different approaches to how you might solve that problem or they might just give you a really specific goal but involves playing with a really goofy mechanic this game has like here's the Zelda stealth mission here's a mission mission where you try to throw an apple into this hoop like who knows who knows what's going to happen try to build a catapult out of these spare parts like like Zelda Tears of the Kingdom was all about and and it, and it didn't follow through enough on this uh, but it would but it had the building system uh in Dragon's Wait, Dogma, Tears of the Kingdom doesn't have many quests r related to the building system. It, Tears of the Kingdom drops the ball in that the tutorial is really good at making you use the building system to proceed because you have to physically figure out how do we get from here to there. There's a rail on the mm -hmm. way, uh, like uh, like a, there's a rail going between two islands. How do I yeah, make a yeah. device that makes me get to the other island? Because I physically I cannot get one, past yeah. that hole without making a thing that works. Uh, mm -hmm. For the rest of the game in Tears of the Kingdom, you have a bunch of mobility options, and they also bring back the glider. And so, like by and large, uh, it's almost never faster to build a device to get anywhere. To the point where most mm -hmm. of the times they they give you a little guy. He's like, "I need to reach my friend." Uh, that little guy, if you just pick him up and carry him to the other guy, that's usually faster than building something, even if it's way over there. Just because building is so slow, unless you're just mm -hmm. conjuring prefab stuff that you already built in the past, and that's boring in its own way. Uh, the, yeah. just the simple yeah. fact that the game just stopped stopped having stopped being a series of islands in the sky uh, after the tutorial completely removed the game's ability to make you actually problem solve by building. That it was literally it had to, from that moment on it was completely self driven like sandbox stuff mm -hmm. like literal sandbox stuff like like GTA pissing off the cops for fun type sandbox stuff like you could fuck around with the building all you wanted in Tears of the Kingdom but there was almost never a reason to use it ever again outside of really mm -hmm. contrived scenarios. And that was just disappointing to me because that seemed like that was the point of the game. But whenever I tried building stuff, not only did it often just not work and I felt punished for trying, but also I'm like, I could have just walked over there. Could have just done it the normal mm -hmm. way and would have been faster. Yeah. <laughs> this, is all, this is all trying to distract me from just making normal progress at a normal speed. Uh, but like uh, Dragon's Dogma has so few verbs, so few interactions overall that they can give you almost no quests. And so almost every quest in the main game that makes any sense is basically go over to that town. Something's up over there. Go just go over there. Or go oh, there's a there's a, a fiend in the in the mountains. You got to take care of the that's uh, hit him with your sword. And so like the quests are hmm. barely are barely distinguishable from just playing the game as a sandbox basically. But on mm -hmm. so like, so then it's like okay, well maybe they'll carry it with a uh, with amazing writing, just incredible characters and like world design and lore. Uh, 
the story of Dragon's Dogma, I'll, I'll spoil it a little bit here, but it, it's bad, like all the way through. Uh, so Dragon's mm-hmm. Dogma One is a game where uh, you uh, you live just a little little sad man in a fisher village, and a dragon attacks your town and obliterates. It just really wrecks havoc. But then you try to fight the dragon and he just obliterates you in like one hit, and then he rips your heart out, which is a weird choice. But he rips your heart out and he eats it, and now you're the arisen. You are bound to this dragon's uh, fate in a way that I keep seeing throughout folklore, but don't I keep not finding the origin of it but it's like like Dragonheart the movie like there's a bunch I've seen a bunch of different fiction like this and Dragon Guard does this too where the the dragon and the rider are bound by fate and if one dies the other one dies or something so the, the when the every now and then the dragon creates an arisen which is like a superpower guy he's he's his fate is to one day face the dragon again uh he's bound to that and f- for some reason this also lets him have power over pawns which are these weird slave people there's just people all throughout the world and, that have no yeah. discernible personality or drive of their own and just kind of wander around and take orders from people. But specifically, the Arisen has power over all of them and you can just and, and they just obey him and worship him and stuff like that. So you get so yep, Dragon's yeah. Dogma, you always have a party of, of you can always have a party of three pawns with you and you go out and fight things and eventually you fight the dragon. Dragon's Dogma 2 has the same premise, mostly but tells it really confusingly because you start, you wake up in a prison and you get out of the prison, but there was, there was some confusing cutscenes before that, that didn't make sense. And then you, eventually like hours into the game, it finally shows you a flashback of you getting attacked by the dragon and all this happening. Like, why did you, why did you make, why did you, why are you retelling dragons dogma one, but confusingly, but in, in dragons, but like in dragons dogma two, the kingdom is about, uh, the kingdom has a thing where like the arisen is the sovereign of the land so once you're the arisen that means you're going to become the king basically but the existing power structure doesn't want that so they immediately uh hit, hushed up your existence and and sold you off to a, a labor camp and tried to, and hoped that you would just disappear because they wanted to just <laughs> have their false sovereign but that is immediately that's resolved fantastic. by you just leaving and coming back so that didn't really and like and by the time you find out that's even the plot, you've already made it back to the capital. So it's like, oh, this conspiracy that amounts to almost nothing. Okay. You just hmm. go on your mission to, to encounter the, the the dragon. And like 30 hours in the game, you finally encounter the dragon. And they basically monologue the plot of the first game at you, which is also the plot of this game. But it wasn't told as well in this game. And you really do realize they're just doing the same game again, note for note. And all of the... There's a whole conspiracy and a bunch of other bad guys or people in your way, supposedly, but none of them affect like the quests or or really even actually functionally get in your way on your journey. So it's like lip service to the idea that stuff is happening. And all of the bad guys are like there at the final showdown, but are tossed aside immediately just to be about the dragon again. So the game just like gives up on the idea of this not just being the first plot the game's plot again, like immediately mm-hmm. to the point where you're like, what was the point of the last 30 hours of story? Like none of this went anywhere it was so nothing but on top of that like no npc in the entire game has a personality uh they have like no particular like goals or arcs or through lines uh you'll get a cutscene that shows a character as if they're important and then you'll never see them again they keep showing you this one lady that's an archer like she's a love interest and she is the person who like wakes you up like when you wake up from getting your heart ripped out but then she's in the ending cutscenes over and over again as like a, like a callback to all the important people you met. And I'm like, I don't know her name. Where was she this whole game? Where'd she go? Oof. I don't. She clearly didn't show up in the main story ever. <laughs> like it's extremely funny when the game tries to show uh, a through line of all the characters that are important to the plot because you're like, I don't, I can't name these characters. <laughs> I can't name any of these characters. That's where we are right now. And wow. th- this speaks to some extent about like the the ambitious element people talk about is that dragon's dogma is ambitious but it doesn't have the will to follow through on any of the ambitious ideas so it's it's more like a the game is more bullet point than story so it's like like at the end of the game the guard captain was being held by the dragon and the uh the dragon was is essentially like a choice to be made like do you do you fight the do you fight the dragon and save the guard captain or do you accept the the sacrifice of the guard captain's life to become the sovereign and live forever and so on like that's the choice each arisen supposedly is, is hit with the thing is the, that the guard captain's there 
because they're supposed to be my lover because the game has mm. an affection system and it tries to figure out oh, who yeah. your favorite NPC is in the entire game and threaten their life at the end. But the guard captain is just the NPC that you talk to for most of the main quests in the first half of the story. So, so <laughs> there's even one character I specifically gave 60 gifts to because I was trying to figure out the affection system and it still gave me the guard captain who I, my only reactions with were just doing the story. Like that's, this like this is a great example right. of how this game just sh like shits sh this shits itself and crashes and burns. Is that like that's an ambitious idea to try to intuit without asking you up front who your favorite NPC in the entire game is and then threaten that person's life in a dramatic narrative moment, but you're wrong, and you're wrong for two reasons. You're wrong because no, I didn't I didn't in any way try to increase my increase my affection affection with that guard captain, but you're also wrong. Because you failed to make characters, so there's no one anyone would care about in this game enough that you could threaten them, and people would be like, "Oh no, not uh, George." <laughs> Is his name George? <laughs> like, George oh. too. And here's the thing: was it George too? And here's the thing: they did that last <laughs> game. The first game already had this. The first game already had the thing. I remember where there's an affection system with random people, yeah. and then everyone wasn't got, it like the, mo the most, baker or somebody that most got, people who got the guy getting... who repairs your gear. The, the one, one yeah, the one yeah. convenient like weaponsmith shopkeeper guy in town, the, I think it was a dwarf or something. He was just almost always the person that everyone got threatened over in the first game. They had the same system and it fell just as flat last time, and they did nothing to improve it this time. Honestly, that is a pretty good threat though. Like you better <laughs> come up or I'm gonna kill the yeah. like the blacksmith that you use. Like no no I need that guy. He repairs my armor no. every day. Like fuck. Exactly. I don't know his name, but like, I wait. know he's. he's his but, rates. But that's a great summary upset. of Dragon's Dogma 2 is that they 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 don't they bring back in, like ambitious ideas from the first game and solve none of their problems. Like they just did them again <laughs> the same bad way. And you're like, what the fuck? Really? <laughs> I can't believe they're note for note recreating the same scene that everyone laughed at a decade ago. Like they didn't hear that they no they don't know. Did they not know that everyone was yeah. like, what the fuck? They I guarantee you, people didn't. They didn't hear the laughing. They just knew that like people talked about it a lot. And it's just, like okay, it's well, people talk wild. about the system a lot. So there's also an good. entire there's an entire middle part of the game where once you get to the capital, uh, they keep giving you missions that are about infiltrating the capital and like getting digging up dirt on people and uh, like infiltrating a masquerade and stealthing this place and stealing stuff and. The more I was in there, the more confused I was because I was like, okay, I'm like 90% sure this game doesn't have a stealth system. No, and I'm also not episode. sure if the guards even aggro on you. So it's less an infiltration mission and it's more like just walk into the castle, grab the thing and walk back out over and over again from us the quests because there's no systems. They uh. didn't make systems. But then they kept the quests about the thing. And then you're, you as a gamer boy who's played games before are like, well, there's got to be systems here, right? There must be systems. So you 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 spend most of the experience like shadow boxing mechanics that don't exist. Because you're like, well, I got to avoid those guards because what if they, are, do they, do they chase you? I can't, I just, you're like you keep, you're, you're, you're just, you're like, there has to be, this quest has to do something right there has to be objectives there's be a challenge surely there's gameplay in this quest of some kind so you're like anticipating mechanics that i still don't know if they exist basically it's just and this is like a huge chunk of the first half of the game story is you going to this fucking castle over and over again to get dirt on the queen and stuff which also amounts to nothing it doesn't go anywhere because you just leave and go south anyway for the most part but like none of these quests have mechanics you just so you just walk in and walk back out again, basically. And there's a there's a completely baffling the thing where there's there's a masquerade that's next to there's a masquerade ball that happens on some nights that's next door to the whorehouse. But I'd already been to the whorehouse and triggered cutscenes there and met the leader and, and uh, the owner and so on. I go to this masquerade ball. And I'm supposed to meet. I'm supposed to find the false the false sovereign, the person that's impersonating me. And, uh ambiguous goals to accomplish something by finding the false sovereign it's like you're, you're, only, you're basically just there to find the, the false sovereign that's all it tells you so you go to the masquerade ball you're wearing a mask just walking around 500 generic npcs are dancing and chatting and there's one really important looking guy 
and he has a, and when you talk to him, it triggers like the cutscene style conversation. But he's just like, could it be? No. And that's it. This is like a, like the, the vague idea that he might recognize you, I many might not. And that's puzzling because I'm a giant cat man, and he's not a cat man. So he, that seems like an ineffective way of impersonating me. Uh, but he's the only person that that acts like an NPC in this entire region. So I'm like, what do I do? Do I take off? So I, I tried taking off my mask, and that just gets you arrested. Everyone freaks out. That's the one place where everyone freaks out if you if you break uh, the dress code apparently, and the guards suddenly freak out. Is that if you take your mask off at the masquerade ball? And then like, and you like, get oh, arrested for it, which is hilarious. Yeah, and then I was like, okay, how do I prove that I'm the the arisen then? Because it seems like a bad idea to reveal myself, but I don't know how to make this quest proceed. So I'll just take my shirt off because I have a giant heart scar over my heart where it was ripped out. So it's pretty pretty arisen-y right there. That also just gets me in trouble. I'm like, okay. Uh, and then fucking Condition game exposure. journalist Austin Walker was watching my live stream and laughing because I was doing literally step for step every single thing that he did wrong when he was trying to figure <laughs> this quest out too, when he was trying to review it. And just like, just this fucking schadenfreude. Because uh, I'm just like, I can't, I can't figure out what this quest wants for me. I'm so confused. And eventually on my, like, my sixth night of attending the same masquerade ball over and over again because I just could not figure out what the fuck this quest wanted from me because it gives you no discernible objective. There is a random NPC that talks about how there's like a secret passage at the back of the building. And if you go through the secret passage, it, when you go, the moment you open the secret passage, you get the quest progress. So like, oh my god, there's a secret passage. And then you walk through the secret passage and you go and it leads directly to the brothel. And then you're supposed to find the false sovereign was actually at the brothel, not the masquerade. And you can spy on them uh, meeting with some ladies. And then, and then his the the queen walks in on them and so on. And, the, and an important scene plays out, quote unquote important. It doesn't, the story it basically doesn't exist. But like, they left it so open-ended because they wanted you to stumble on all that. But the thing is, I'd already been to that area for like seven other quests. So I've already been to the secret passage multiple times. I had to get some guy's glasses in that area. I've been to the brothel before. I've run up and down the secret zone, the back road between both of those several times. There was no discovery to be made. So the quest was designed for you to discover this thing, but you can only discover it by fucking off and leaving while not knowing that that's your objective because your objective says to look for him at the masquerade and there's no hint that he left the masquerade. So he's actually at a different location and you're supposed to just like stumble onto that something like this game's gonna have a next level amount of googling every quest for most people because <laughs> an astonishing number mm. of quests are completely incomprehensible all the time i love if when it, that I love if when the that quest happens. isn't go kill the griffin no one knows how to do it like er, er, consistently there are so many <laughs> quests. just consistently there are so many quests where i'm like no one can tell what the fuck the objective is what the fuck is the objective of this quest? Not, and, it, and it's like the main story it doesn't have any indicator it has an indicator at the masquerade saying talk to the false sovereign Who's not there? Huh? That's it? There's yes. not like a, a like an actual. Uh, okay. Yeah, Almost every quest, quest has play. a starting objective, and then no updates, and then it's out, and then it's over. Oh, oh. You okay, have to just yeah. like figure out what the style. fuck. It's like a fucking Lucas Arts adventure game at some point, where the level of like l logical leaps that you have to make to that. You know, like, to the point where even when you know the more... solution, it's actually really hard to backfill the logic of how you were supposed to do the quest. Still. You know that works oh. really well if you make a a. a sort of an immersive sim style game because it's open-ended yeah but even immersive sims whatever. have to be clear about what your objective is because they'll, they'll leave the all the steps in between them ambiguous but that means you have to be really clear about what your end goal is well, because people have to know where they're going <laughs> well yeah it depends it depends on the object it depends you on the can't game, just make I an objective you... that's like go to the masquerade ball and the secret real objective is find the false sovereign in a secret room of the brothel oh, a completely so different building the... I see what you mean. So the beginning and journal entry is actually an objective in and of itself and not a thing that happens to set up the, the mission. No, the it's game just, like, just says, find the false sovereign at the masquerade ball. And that then it just leaves it there for you to figure it out. Yeah, that's really But the false, sovereigns, <laughs> that's, that's and, that's but the, the false sovereigns having sex at the brothel in a completely different location that's technically oh. joined by a secret passage, but only one that you would hear about via messages, but also like the game treats it you, you it only works if you find the quest steps in the exact order that they want you to so you have to find the uh, secret passage during the quest and walk to the back path during the quest to can like make the each step of the logic happen to then enable the ending to happen but like 
the secret passage isn't very secret because there's a bunch of quests that take you to that area and you can you and uh, in my case i found it like five hours ago it had been in and out of it over and over, over and over again so this quest was stalling waiting for me to discover the secret passage but there was nothing to discover i already knew it was there it just wasn't what the objective was so i wasn't looking at it i was like why would i go to the secret passage he's supposed to be at the masquerade it's just it's, it's infuriating it's insane it's just literally insane and like mm -hmm. once again the game has like no systems so you're like you're just like helplessly like do i just do i talk to this guy okay do i talk to that guy how about i talk to that guy and you're like do i strip like what the what could i even guess that being because there's no verbs in this game what could i even guess are the interactions they would hope for me to do here and a lot of the quests are like that where you just start losing your mind and that's on top of the game being broken so on top of the game uh, having bad quests that are poorly designed and poorly communicated and having almost no mechanics for you to even play with to design quests around, the quests are often just frequently broken just all the time. It's like at one point, there was a guy who was arrested, and I arrested him. I was the guy who caught this guy in the first place, and I'm the reason he's I in did. jail. So I go to the jail, and the, the quest is like, this guy needs guidance. And it's supposed to be like, it's just a really ambiguous objective that's indicating that like you should like... This is that hey, this character is kind of imp important in that they have some kind of through line you can follow with this quest. So, you know, go talk to him or something. So I go to the prison where I'm welcomed in by the guards, and my pawns wait outside like they always do at most major places. They just stand out there uh, like a horse, and so they, then they welcome me in. I t I talk to the guy, the the guard, the guard captain, just fine. And then in the middle of talking to the guard captain, all of the guards just start attacking me. Huh? And it's one of those games where like you you get in, you get you get inserted into like a conversation. St you're stuck talking to the person during the conversation, but it does the weird choice that almost no games do where the the, the world around you is still simulating. So hmm. all the people will start attacking you and they can't hurt you, but they're all attacking you at the same time while you're just passively talking to the guard. And then the moment the conversation ends, then then they're beating the shit out of you because they're still hitting you. But, like, I'm literally wow. talking to the guard captain, and it wasn't like, aha, you fall into my trap, or like, ah, oh, you have all, you, you, we're, we're gonna finally get you, you scum. He's just like, he's just talking to me, because I'm allowed here. <laughs> but all the guards are attacking me, and I don't know why. And if, if they arrest you, they, it, it's funny because they're very weak, but if they do a knockdown attack on you, you'll fall over, and they'll immediately cuff you and arrest you and put you in a jail where you'll have no items. And the only way out is to bribe the guard at the door to give them money uh, to let you out. And then you and uh, but then they, but then even though I just bribed them to let me out, they then immediately arrest me again. <laughs> and they just get what? an infinite loop of them stealing all my money until I have no money left. Um, they literally took all of my money on an infinite loop. All while the quest is just like, yeah, walk in and talk to that guy. That kid needs guidance. He's in a dark place. He needs <laughs> your money. Like, what he needs He's got a racket going. This is one of the things I'm... where the fact that you can pick people up does let you troubleshoot the broken ass quest. Like I bought, I went and bought a makeshift jail key, which is a single use jail key. Ran in there, used it on the j on the jail cell of the kid, picked him up and carried him out of the jail while the guards were wailing on me. And the moment he's outside <laughs> the jail, he was the you, then the quest just proceeds. And because the quest can't account for what how you did the quest, it's like. Was it you? Were you the one that let me out of jail? And I'm like, I carried you. <laughs> like, even the quest doesn't wow. know what you did. It just knows he's out of jail, so he must be at that part of the story. Was it you? What kind of quest is that if he asks that uh -huh. sort of question? No, it's, it's you are supposed to knock him out or it's something? It's insane. Well, you're supposed to bribe the guard captain repeatedly until he just actually lets him out eventually. But I couldn't, no, he just I couldn't consistently talk to the guard captain because the, all the guards kept attacking me. And I couldn't figure out why because this game doesn't have, like, a crime system. It doesn't have any comprehensible thing. And even if it did, the way these games are supposed to work it, across the whole genre is that once you're arrested, that means that you've been... That's it. That's the end of your crime. That's how you reset the crime state in every open world that's RPG is you, get a, you, so you get arrested. But it was just an infinite loop of being arrested and not knowing why I'm being arrested and them taking all of my money. The game is just a, I... a nightmare. It does have... It, it, there is There are parts where the surprise mechanics are very amusing like one of the one of the ambitious ideas that they fall through on is that every single capital city has a massive tomb and there's all these beds all these flat slabs where every single npc because every npc in the game can die mm -hmm. if they die they'll be on those on those slabs 
So you can technically deal with that. Because uh, there's items called wake stones. You collect wake stone shards everywhere, and every three of them makes one wake stone. And if you die in combat, you can use a wake stone to revive yourself on the spot to just get back up and keep going. But it's a very limited use resource, and you're even more incentivized not to do that once you realize you can save NPCs with them. And so there was a jank ass quest where I had to, I had to like catch the guy that was going to kill the empress, and I couldn't figure out where. Or who he was, or, or how I was supposed to figure out the logic of this quest, and I failed, and she died. But then later on, I realized I could just go to the tomb and revive the Empress, and then the story just continues with the Empress alive, and you're going after the people that killed her already. And the game does acknowledge that she died on that level, which is very funny. So like, wow, it's does... very it's very funny that you can do that, but it's very annoying when the game basically when you basically have to troubleshoot the game because now this creates a problem where whenever a quest is broken and you can't figure out where an NPC is, you're like. Motherfucker, did they die? Even though I didn't, like, it wasn't on camera, like, it wasn't a thing that I did. Are these fucking oblivion-ass NPCs just walking into the woods and dying sometimes? And sometimes they are. There's just, you go to the, you, it didn't yeah. happen in the first region, but the second region, especially whenever I went to the tomb area, there was just more bodies there. And I'm like, I don't even know who these characters are. Are they important? <laughs> what quests might I be yeah, yeah, yeah. like, like, what quests might I be missing out on? <laughs> and at one point, yes, like the plot critical NPC was there and dead, and I had to revive them because I couldn't continue the story. Did you go to the pile them? of bodies to check. <laughs> Is any of you relevant? To yeah, no, it's you? wild. And like, that, I like that, that though. That, I like that you're that you know where they are. That is like, that's literally uh, missing. Uh, that system's extremely that literally... funny to me, but it gets very frustrating very quickly. <laughs> Oh so yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That, no, no, that's it. That's extremely annoying. That happens in Oblivion as well. If uh, if you screw up a quest because somebody dies, you can just spawn them using the console. And, well, and, that's uh, the, 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 well, yeah, because it's you know outside of the confines of of uh, what well, what the game was designed around. But it does sound to me like the resurrection system in in Dag Dragon's Dogma Two is also outside of the confines of what the game was designed around. If you resurrect the Empress unhinged. and they, oh no, yeah, it sounds like they tacked that on at the end. It's it extremely... like, oh man, the game is too buggy. Give them the console command. Give them the console command. It's, it's like adding a, funny that you can a just, no clip mode. You can just say no to the <laughs> a person being assassinated in the story. It's like if the it's, it's like if, if the president of the NCR got assassinated and then you just revived him in New Vegas, <laughs> just brought him back yeah. to life. Like no, the story is continuing. The president's alive again. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, reinforces, it reinforces how overpowered your character is because he just breaks the logic of the world he's in and that he can except no one else acknowledges wake stones so it's just you could just bring people back to life wake yeah, it sound like it was added it's a wild after the fact it's a wild I, game yeah i'm not the, too, uh, i'm not too sure what the value is though like what is the value in making uh <laughs> i don't value know in making, the game just has immersive uh, the game just has very <laughs> very uh ambitious ideas on paper and then but, it's very unclear what the goal of that mechanic is or even whether and and they and they fall they fail to follow through out. with them yeah yeah, yeah that's the yeah. thing like they're, like, they're just like a bunch the of npcs ideas being able to die isn't very fleshed out the uh whatever i said earlier wasn't fleshed out i've heard other uh, relationship yeah. mechanic they so, brought back and this this, so this capitalizes the in the reason why it's called dragon's dogma one at the beginning of the game spoilers for dragon's dogma 2 i guess but when you beat the main story you get caught in a time loop and eventually realize that your secret is you need to you need to climb under the dragon during the flight and stab him in the heart and this causes a post-apocalyptic setting where the oceans evaporate and the world is red now and you now have a now there's a creeping fog that's coming in that will eat the entire world from the boundaries of the map and you need to like run around and, sort of, and triage the map and it's sort of like dead rising sort of way where you have to do all these things on the map under a time limit and if you rest and stuff then more of the world is eaten up which sounds really cool yeah, okay. and it's really cool it looking to so look around better. and be like oh the ocean's gone and everything this whole part of the game took me like two hours so it's just a an <laughs> they transformed level. the well, entire level. setting of the game for a, for an epilogue mm -hmm. that's so poorly developed and doesn't have much going on that i was over in like two hours it has four major oh, locations oh. you need to go to only three of which have bosses, and two of them are the same boss. So it functionally has two wow. bosses. Then you go to the final th the location, and you're like, oh, is it going to be a final showdown against the dragon, but like a cooler fight now? Or some new, crazy, fate-defying boss? Game just ends in a cutscene. No. What? Hmm. 
the whole game the whole game's over you just did this entire and exciting yeah. little rpg and it's over and just just and at this moment. point you have enough fairy stones and port crystal set up that you can probably teleport directly to your objectives and just do them all in one go very quickly there's a bonus subplot where you can go to every capital city and eva and evacuate everybody because of the impending doom uh where do you evacuate them to if it's like a just like a place there's oh, some ruins. There's just, just like a place. There's just some <laughs> ruins. No, there's just, yeah, there's just some it. ruins that used to be in the middle of the ocean that people like. And for some reason, that's the place oh, that that like. That's is, the safe place. The for some under, reason, the that, previously underwater ruined place. Yeah, for some okay, reason, that's, that's the safe it's, place. It's, it's, so, it's, so, that that one guy swears. No, that, I mean that, I'm that one. That one guy is like definitely. This is the place, and so you just take them all there because that's definitely the place, I guess. Uh yeah, I mean, <laughs> okay. I, I evacuated <laughs> sure. I, I evacuated basically everyone except for the elves because the elf quest just broke. Wow. It was just it just I stopped. Do that. I guess I didn't evacuate people in the correct order, so I evacuated someone the elves needed. And even though that means the elves just even though that just means the people move over there instead of where they were before, for some reason that means the elves are literally unevacuable now because their quest just fails midway through with no warning or explanation. It doesn't even say why it uh -huh. failed. It's just like, I don't know, man, shit's fucked. The world's scary. Probably not going to be able to evacuate. Like, it just gives you a generic message about, like, oh, the red fog is creeping in and the world is in chaos is the explanation, which is not an explanation. Uh, and also, the elves oh. are still there and, uh, and no settlements were taken out. So, this just doesn't make any sense that it failed. But it failed, so whatever. But I evacuated everybody else in the entire world. Uh, it's pretty easy. But the quests uh, are... Their, their quests are a little nonsensical and they're scattered about, but you do with them and everyone evacuates. Uh, the ending of the game in no way acknowledges whether or not anyone was evacuated anyway. So oh, I don't okay. know why you would do... So it, it's I, I irrelevant. It doesn't matter. So yeah, it's, it's all right that the elves didn't make it. They made it. Well, also just the inherent element of like the 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 looping and fate oriented nonsense of what's happening in the story means that like maybe it doesn't matter if you evacuate anybody anyway maybe yeah. it's immediately yeah, irrelevant just, so why would you it doesn't do sound it sound like it's important it's just the whole the whole ending wants to be so cool because you you get taught you break a time loop and the whole world transforms and the game literally does finally give you the dragon's dogma two logo like it wants to be so cool and then you will be uh, done with uh, that chunk of the game in like two hours and you'll be like, that was, that was it? What was the point of that? What? Wait, 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 so wait, 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 wait. They, they do a title splash screen yep. two hours away from the ending of the game. Okay. that I, Yeah. When you've quote unquote beaten, because like, you've beaten Dragon's Dogma. Now it's time for Dragon's Dogma 2. <laughs> That's the level of hype they give it. And then it's over immediately. And you're like, that was it. And then none, no, of, the that, none of the I, bosses are hard. All the bosses are like a weird red glowy <laughs> like Ganon blight looking ass Tears of the Kingdom boss or Breath of the Wild the Breath of the Wild blight bosses basically they're all goopy and their thing is that they're covered in goopy. eyes that you have to hit uh, you have to hit all their eyes or all their I bodies and it's a progression like this part of their body has eyes then you hit all those and they get stunned for a bit and then and then it unveils another part of their body that has eyes the problem with like this if you hit the, me in the eyes I die yeah yeah and then you, and then you grow, like you grow more eyes yeah then I grow more eyes yeah. in the back. The problem with this strategy is multifaceted. One, if you're a melee character, uh, you're on the ground, so you can't really tactically aim attacks in, in any cool way. And they technically have a body climbing system, but it's no. This is not like. It's not Shadow of the Colossus. It's not. Uh, mm -hmm. Even though they claim not, it as an inspiration, which it yeah. isn't. It's not Shadow of the Colossus, it's, just, it's not Monster review. Hunter, it's not Breath of the Wild, it's not any of these games where that have reasonable systems for climbing things. The climbing is incredibly janky and unhelpful and your stamina goes down really fast and it's just very difficult to actually reach a weak point as a melee character that isn't on the ground. So you're basically irrelevant. Like it's just not that, it's so wow. much struggle to do what anyone else can just do by aiming because there's just archers and mages. So archers can just shoot the weak spots directly. But crucially, the fucking mage or sorcerer or whatever like the offensive spellcaster is, that motherfucker can just conjure a tornado that covers the entire boss. So oh, then it hits the eyes automatically. Yeah, mo so most major encounters what? I had, the the offensive spellcaster in my party just consumed the boss in a massive spell, and then the boss was pretty much dead. Like wow, that's so, it, so wait, huh? the, a huge amount of the content is you just like. 
hoping against hope that the the pawn rng ai will just like actually do its job because as a melee character you're just like chipping away at this guy and having a huge struggle and at any moment the mage might just delete the boss and you don't know when because you can't t you can't just what? you can't just trust you can't just trust them to do their job they're just you don't have no idea what they're doing their ai is insanely stupid and you can't you have no ways to command them in any way but like, he has a move that can just end it all he yeah, yeah, like, yeah it's well, a big tornado that will hit everything which means it's hitting the weak spot which means you'll just watch it like these characters that have eight health bars just shred through health bar after health bar at shocking speeds you know like man it would take me so much work to do that myself <laughs> that would take so many you sword can't, you swings can't. You There's can't tell like them to do anything. You can give them what the They're just fuck? incredibly stupid. It's deeply frustrating. Like How the do you, like the like the dragons choose? have a meteor spell where they a uh, vertical red a vertical beam of fire keeps spawning in various locations, and then the meteor flies at people, and it basically just selects random people in your party, and obliterates them in one hit if they don't move. And so it's not that hard for you to avoid, but you'll just watch in in bafflement as these quote unquote pawns that supposedly learn from your play style, they claim, uh, just stand in the fire and die every single mm -hmm. wave. And you have to pick them all up mm -hmm. Gears of War style by physically running up to them and holding down a pick up button on them one by one to fill up the bar oh, to then get them that. back up. And by the time you finish reviving all of them while the boss is attacking you, he'll probably just cast Meteor again and they're all down again. You're like, please stop. I just want to continue the fight and I literally can't continue until I have my pawns back up, which I have to revive one by one. And they're all too stupid to dodge the most heavily telegraphed attack in history. And I just want the that maze to be alive uh, long uh, enough so that he one shots the boss because that's his one job and he's just too stupid to live. <laughs> That's, that's all he's good for. He's just here to one shot this boss for me. There's almost Those never like so decisions. You, that there's almost never like make. a there's almost never like a, an intense one on one battle of the wits akin to like Monster Hunter, and it's almost always like a desperate struggle where you're getting flattened or you completely obliterate the boss. And I obliter I obliterated all of the final, specifically all of the ones in the scary epilogue hellscape, where there was like now the real dark the real Dark Souls experience begins here. T Dragon's Dogma Two title happens up happens. Those were all of okay. the easy bosses. They got fucking flattened. So it was just a wet yeah. fart of a of an apocalypse. Like they wanted they they wanted to be the the guts berserk Griffith nightmare, and they borrow heavily from that aesthetic, but it was easy. It's just easy. And then it, then it was over. <laughs> I I love this game. I think this game sounds probably like game of the year. No, I don't think I've I ever heard a more, it, a more it clear and I, I will say that, like, it. it was fun for stretches of time. Like there are like there's parts of just like going around the wilderness and fighting some monsters with your buds that like have a playfulness and a fun to it. In the early game, when I discovered the knockback shield ability on, on the fighter, it's just extremely amusing to keep like launching goblins off of cliffs all the time. I became mm. a, I became a Lucio main basically. Like all of my choices were always built around to fall damage and how how do I get people to fall off cliffs? That's but pretty fun. For huge stretches of the actual stuff you're supposed to do to continue the game, like I like I, I guess this is a, this is the let's player problem a little bit. So you're trying to like make progress and go somewhere because you don't want to just make a 50 hour playthrough of you just randomly wandering around and with no particular goal at all You're usually at least trying to do side quests or something and being goal oriented in that game is where it's the least fun and i think just kind of wandering around like the early part of final fantasy 15 will is enough that a lot of people will probably have positive opinions from of it and these will be positive opinions of the game from people who also never beat it it'll be that kind of game oh really where all the people who like the game a lot of also I think a lot of people will praise the game and then proceed to not beat it. And they'll still like kind of have positive opinions. They'll totally mean to get back to it one day, but they're not sure why they never ever... They're not totally sure why they never quite beat it. And it's because the game is so actively unfun to make progress at that a huge percentage of the players are just going to forget to. And then they'll just like play it for fun for a bit and then put it down and think positively on it while not understanding how fucked it is as a video game. <laughs> interesting i hit I my low that. point I when the, i found uh, when i found that there's a class that can't do damage oh you, there's a class called the trickster <laughs> and the trickster has a few different buttons one is they have a they have an a they have a thing where they, they their weapon is a sensor like the smoke thing that they have in religious practices uh okay you hit people with it and it aggros them on you 
but you can also create okay. a clone of yourself and then whenever your clone exists all the aggro is on that guy but the clone doesn't attack. Okay, that's interesting. But you can launch the clone on oh. people, and then that causes that person to be targeted by everybody else. And then the uh, there's also you have an Wait, AOE. You mean it, you you mean your allies? You can send the clone onto your allies. No, you can send a clone onto an enemy, yeah, and then all the enemies attack that enemy. Oh, so you can that's redirect. Cool. So you can like redirect that. aggro. You can also have okay. you have an AOE okay. buff that makes everybody do more damage, but also they're taking damage continuously, slowly, like a like a slow poison. Uh, mm. and that's most of it. That's about it. So, f fun, oh. wacky class for fighting bands of goblins, where you're like, all those, all you guys fight that guy. Haha, -ha, I'm so wacky. No good for bosses, I assume. No. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say this doesn't sound. Just you're, one, not, you're not compelling me to use this against a there's boss. There's one you're big just, dragon, really and trick. your abilities are, uh, not, 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 not nothing. You can't oh. interact oh. with the like. <laughs> I had a big story boss fight against the the plague dragon, and I'm like, "Oh, I've been tricked. I'm the tricks. <laughs> I'm the tricks to E because this trickster doesn't have any buttons that interact <laughs> with this fight. Like you can't attack. You don't need to tell your pawns to attack the boss. You can't. You can give them a damage buff." collectively that also hurts them but you can't like hmm. it's not like you're a leadership class like you can't like control them better or tell them to any commands or specific abilities to use you can't develop yeah. strategies so you just get trapped as a non a non-combat class who also can't heal people like you're not a healer either just kind of watching your pawns and hoping they eventually figure out how to fight the boss and like hmm. So it's it's the class where you're kind of just stuck in like the infinite revival loop that JRPGs put you in sometimes where you're just like every t every turn you're just trying to heal or revive your party because the next hit will take them out again. That kind of death spiral. You'll just like run yeah. around picking up your pawns over and over again while they keep dying. And also in this game, every time someone dies, they lose maximum health until they rest at an inn again. So over the course of this boss fight, they're only dying more frequently. And you just keep picking them up and watching mm -hmm. them die and picking them up, watching them die and having nothing to do besides create a little clone for the boss to one shot every now and then uh d d directing directing their attention for one second and giving a damage boost to your guys that hurts them and that's, that's all you got there's a eventually there's a platform you can create that's supposed to lure people to it and then it's a fake platform so it makes them fall off a cliff never got a single okay, NPC. never got a single enemy that would ever aggro onto it like in the in the in the trailer for it <laughs> wow in the fucking like preview video for it, the, the the dumb boss just walks straight onto it immediately and falls off a cliff. No, no. Mm, every yeah, time I summon that platform, it just didn't exist to anybody. No one cared about it. And I'm like, cool. That was like my one button. So it's just a fucking class yeah. you just can't do anything with. You're like, what the fuck? And like, you pick it out of blind faith that like, oh, this must be a really crazy playstyle. It's got to be so interesting. Like, I, I mean, you have the faith that the developer made a thing that's playable. And then you play it and you're like, what yeah. the, the fuck do you do with this? <laughs> I've just tra I've just been tricked into a bad time of just watching my pawns do the fight for me very slowly. <laughs> yeah, the pawn system always felt like a like a fun thing to include for people who don't have like friends to play an RPG with, but it never came off as a competent system for combat. Like it never seemed like it was a replacement incredibly for messy. having. Yeah, it it's doesn't like, seem it's like, like doing matchmaking for like with Dragon completely Age. random people, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it seemed You're like. You're just watching and a bunch of again, newbies that are just kind of guessing at how to play the game and dying constantly. You're just trying to pick them all back up, as opposed to like, yeah, a party that you can control. Yeah, on the surface, it seems like it would be fun uh, to a degree, but also, it doesn't seem like it's executed well enough to be that. <laughs> So it seems almost like you're just stuck with a, yeah, with like a less great It's real experience. rough. I Game also never tests your skills on the critical path, really. Like the final boss fight against the dragon just tells you to use siege weapons, like the really bad missions in Monster Hunter World with Zora Magdaros. So yeah. your, your build and level of co competency aren't relevant to your success of that mission. And it's, the, and it's still, even though there's an epilogue, that's the Dragon's Dogma 2 stuff. That's functionally still the final boss of the game, and it 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 gives up on the idea of testing you in any way and just 
throws in gimmicks to make up for it, and so you don't have to actually fight him normally. Uh, it's just, I just, what, a, what a bizarre game. That's great. What a bizarre video game. Someone will, people well, will like it because they'll find something in it they like, and also people will like everything regardless yeah. on some level. But it's like, I was, yeah, I was gonna say yeah. people like it. it has incomprehensible design philosophy. I just have no idea what's going on with it. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like design philosophy may be a stretch. The, the, I especially for, I don't know. I I think I think there's what I meant, I said before. It sounds like there's a lot of design decisions that weren't made because the way we players experience things, and the way they are thought up in the minds of the designers, sometimes is not the same. Because iterative design is one thing, or listening to feedback inside a company is another, and uh, and or or just taking inspiration from other games and making a game that is a little bit like this but a little bit different. It's another thing. And Dragon's Dogma goes its own way for for one, at least as far as I understand it. And it just sounds that yeah, it just sounds like there's a lot of design decisions that weren't made, a lot of conflicts that weren't thought yeah. out. And if you say anything about this game, half the time people are like, oh, I thought you guys wanted games that don't just hold your hand. And I'm like, really? Really, guys? Yeah, I, You're gonna make, I don't. Fr but I first of all, there's just the nuance game. of the fact that like there's more to it than you can, the quote unquote not holding your hand doesn't like, get, like mean you don't have to bother designing a game that's playable and, incompreh and comprehensible on some level. But also like, you're going to tell me, you're going to give me the not, not hold your hand f response about the game where your fucking pawns literally never shut up about basic tutorial elements for the entire game. <laughs> I didn't know that. <clears throat> what? Literally the entire what time you're playing, your, your fucking pawns never stop talking. And they're always like, Master, you've been doused. Try to dry yourself off as soon as possible. And like they, they literally, like, every time you get a status element, they oh, shout no. at you about a status element. If you pick up any plants, they're like, oh, yes, oh, materials. Those can be useful at times. Well, uh -huh. Master, we're getting tired. Oh, Surely really? we should rest soon. The more your inventory fills, the heavier you'll get. Like, they just keep shouting basic tutorial uh, facts literally the entire playthrough on loop all the time. And they just have the, such a shallow loop. That. Honestly, the funniest I element is that they kept calling me out for having a party of furries and having a party of men, which is funny. Wait, like, they don't call oh, you out if you have a party of women? I mean, I didn't they make do. a party of women. I just, they just, they just yeah, keep they, making they, observations they, like, wow, yeah. all of us are different. All of us are members of different vocations. We shall all, we should all emphasize our, uh, complement each other with our different strengths. They just keep making basic, basic, making basic observations, but them constantly calling you out <laughs> for having all men and all furries in your party, you're like, uh, Stop, 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 <laughs> shut up, shut up, people are going to yeah. notice. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're it's occasionally very... funny in their stupid, stupid naivety and like straightforwardness, but they genuinely never shut up about basic mechanics yeah. the entire game in a game you're meant to play for dozens of hours <laughs> and doesn't have that many mechanics. <laughs> and also, Which... like, I, I want to make a point about the holding your hand kind of thing. Because it, it sounds like there's only one way to solve missions, am I right? In in Dragon's Dogma 2? <clears throat> Usually. I mean, there's the example I gave before where you could, like, sneak in yeah. and, uh, like, just break the guy out and carry only, him like, out. There's a, a single path. The, it, you know, it's not like options, right? You can you can maybe fight things differently or you can take... Um, you, mean, you can maybe <clears throat> take literally a different path. But you mean, like, whether or not there's story is, branches? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean. no, there's, there's the one yeah. story. Okay, yeah. It's it uh, plays out when, completely when... linearly and nothing interesting yeah, happens the I'm entire saying. time. Exactly. And it features exactly. no characters. A game not holding your hand <laughs> is a game that lets you do what you want. That is literally what you do with a child. If you don't hold their hand, you let them do what they want. And obviously... If a game only has a linear path, it doesn't let you do what you want. It may not tell you what you want, what what it wants you to do, but it definitely wants you to do something. And it sounds like that's what the design philosophy behind the uh, Dragon Dog Dragon's Dogma is. And I've seen that before in other games, you know, not great games, but I've seen that before, where games are obtuse about what they need you to do, and they only have the one thing that you can do to progress the story. And sure, they're not literally telling you what you need to do, but that's not holding your hand or not holding your hand. The, the only way to not hold your hand is to have freedom. And, you know, that applies to sandbox games. It applies to role-playing games. But to a game that is linear, 
it's not about holding your hand because it's always constr constricting you. If that is an argument that people make, the, yeah, think about it. Think about it for a second, I think. Yeah. But also, we're out of time today. So yep. that's, uh, that's going to be that for this podcast. It's me. It's my turn to say goodbye. Uh, send your questions to dialoguechoicespodcast at gmail.com. And obviously, the, there's a link in the description for uh, each one of our channels. So don't do it or else. That. And uh, go check out uh, Keith, uh, Keith's two other channels, because Keith has all the other channels. Uh, that's uh, yep. Noel Playing Games and Boring Keith. And, uh, and I think Dead Laws is over. You can watch all of Dead Laws now if you're the binge type. Go watch Dead I, Laws. I think I'm the binge type, and then I, I get to episode three, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> I have to work. Dead Laws has a, a, a Dead Laws breaks my brain a little bit because it has an absolute amount a mountain of fan art, like a staggering amount, more than I've ever seen for anything I've ever done. It also That's, has yeah. an average view kind of like a thousand. <laughs> so I'm like, where wow. the fuck? These are the most motivated people ever. There's not that many people watching this show. They're watching it while they're drawing, and now and they're yeah, drawing. And yeah, boring Keith, you might have missed my video essay about Evil Dead because no one watched it. So if you I missed watched it, it, it was good. Go it's watch there. It. it didn't even. Yeah. I used to think, given how the Monster Hunter and Annihilation videos did after Lego Sheet, where they suddenly boost up to 100k, I thought 100k was going to be my baseline, and that my goal mm. is to like try to succeed at getting doing better than that. Then Evil Dead only got 9k. So. Hmm. Wah, I I imagine wah, that there's wah, probably wah. just a of awkward algorithm moment where you're just trying to figure out well the out yes yeah, the algorithm is like maybe i'm only allowed to make i'm maybe i'm only allowed to make queer furry content and anything else will immediately bomb that's the thing i get to worry about now is yeah being constrained mm -hmm. you only have that h bomber guy freedom when you have so many millions of subscribers that everything takes off <laughs> but if you <laughs> if you step out of line you're like well this bot this this video is a flop, and like on a level you didn't think possible in this case, and it's not even suppressed. It doesn't even have a yellow dollar sign. It's, I got it through yeah, un unscathed, and it still could just, apparently can just go fuck itself. So go watch it, it's, and uh, yeah. we'll see you next week. Bye. Good night, everybody. Goodbye.